Hey guys, anybody out there? Give me a what up though. Hi, that will work. You guys have a good picture, good sound. Come on, man. Paul Carroll, why don't you? I'll show you how to make the Frontier antibiotic. It's a it automatically went on. For Carol's learning about technology. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Well, it looks like we were able to live stream with a pretty good picture from the phone. We are also going to be recording with, uh, what, three other cameras and audio. And we will post that later on just in case the stream goes down. Um, may not be able to hear too well, but we'll try to make that be what it is. Well, he's got a microphone. Yeah, but it's not hooked up to the live stream. No. So now I need to get into. You can hear me okay? Okay. Yeah, you can hear me probably. Right? Can you hear me? I'm pretty loud usually. It's. And drama, they used to say, project like Carol. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mute and so, control room. Your voice really carries. Ooh, that's what I want. What's that? I don't know. I'm just trying to learn. Okay, so this is the first. Which one does he have? Okay, so we have um, hello from Georgia. We have Love Back to Eden Tours, I've Learned a Lot. And we have Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Yes. We also have our first question. Paul, how is your garden? Well, it's growing pretty slow this year because it's been an unusually cool, wet spring. But the trees are totally doing great. I don't, you know, they're not acting like there's any problem at all. So they're just totally loaded with fruit and doing quite well. But the garden's definitely slower than normal. And that's just because it's been so wet lately? So wet and cold. It's just been cold. The cold? No, not, you know, the temperature's really low. Is there anything that should be up right now, like strawberries, that aren't? Well, strawberries are doing good. Well, but they're not, like, they're not getting ripe. They're well, no, pretty it's, white and it's, anemic. It's, it's, it's been it's still wet. June, you know. Just... But there's still some out there for needing, right? No, nothing to eat now. today. No. <laughs> uh, Usually on Father's Day there is, right? Yes. I know. It's bad. It's really, really been That's bad. That's usually all we have is strawberries. Right on Father's now. Day. Yeah. Well, there's spinach. Okay. <laughs> we have kale? I've got carrot, but it's small. There you go. I'm going to have some kale. Really um, how come we don't grow blackberries? We like have some blackberries in the back. We have wild blackberries. The, but there's but the thorn on back blackberry is really nice. So we have a couple of plants in the back, but um, I have and squid. I got a really nice planting of blackberries. Yeah. Yeah. Every the time the ones here are, are just not very big. Every time we come over, baby girl wants to hop out of the car when we're driving along and grab a couple blackberry plants just from the side of the road and take them back to Eastern Washington with us because she likes. Free blackberry plants. And I'm like, they're all over the place over here. Yeah, but then I, I was like, they're all over the place over here. Wild. How come you don't have any? But I guess you do have a, a thornless. I have a thornless one. Yeah, that's not wild though. Yeah, that's wild though. Let's see, we have. Oh, that was you. Um, Paul, thank you for doing what you were doing. You've opened my eyes on a number of things. Chris says that he has been growing lettuce and carrots this summer. Nice. Hello from Fort Lauderdale. We love seeing you both. And that's something that's cool because you're both actually here and we don't really ever get to see Carol that often because she's off in other countries or something helping people. <laughs> Give birth and being all selfish and not yeah. being here for us. <laughs> not, not, uh, I don't, I've been, haven't been really going to very many countries, just Mexico. No. I've, I've been to the East Coast and 
Missouri, but and I'm going to Montana next week, so. Yes. Someone here from Pennsylvania. Yay. Pennsylvania, I love Pennsylvania. I have friends in Pennsylvania. We had a cool wet spring in Ohio until May. That's one of the things that we're getting rain in eastern Washington in the desert. We've been getting a lot of rain lately this year. Geoengineering. Awesome. Geoengineering. Yeah, all that, oh. all that spraying of the aluminum and yeah. the chemtrails and this whole thing. I was supposed to be at go, going to Yellowstone next week, and you know the the main entrance in the north, I think, is totally. It's locked down right now. Locked out. This should be open in a couple of days. Why is it locked said down? Because it flooded. Kind of flooded and then poor, tore about or tore apart a whole, bunch of, whole bunch, bunch of bridges and roads and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's really, really sad because I was really looking forward to it. Now, let's see. We have. <clears throat> does Paul still have chickens and what breed does he prefer? Yeah. We have chickens. Um, I don't know if I have any preference. Uh, I, um... You just used to like white. Leg, leg White leg horns, you know, they're a small they're bird, but they produce the biggest and most abundant eggs. You know, they lay, you know, quite a lot of eggs. And nice size, because it's a small, small bird. Yeah. What was the, I think it was uh, blackbirds that you had that yeah, had they're, blue they're the, feathers the, or something? The, the black, the black, um, they're, um, air hot, um, no, um, okay. ocelor, ocelorps are the oh. black ones. How are those? They're good. They're good layers. Yeah. They're just laying. Now, do you do any meat chickens at all? I haven't. Nick, Nick was here. He did. He did meat chickens, but I didn't. We have. We have in the past. It's. It's just a lot more work than we're able to put into it. You know, I'm not. I'm not here. And uh, you know, at least I'm here now more than I ever have been. So things are changing. But um, yeah, it's. We don't really have a lot of help. So. Um, it's not been, you know, it's not been as easy to keep up, but it's definitely been, uh, still have been, that's for sure. Help us in, like, with the garden or just household yeah, stuff? I, or yeah, I kind of put, I, I'm putting out an appeal to, to get someone to come help us, maybe, like, for a week or two weeks or something so we can catch up because there's a lot of weeds. And Although I know that, you know, it's just that they come up through the chips sometimes and... Mm -hmm. It's just it doesn't look as nice as it used to because you know we don't we don't have uh, Aaron does a lot he does he he uh, he does a lot but he doesn't do all that he can be doing so we're I guess we're kind of putting out an appeal to maybe get someone to come up here for a week or two or something. So if there's any woofers Summer. out there that want to learn from Paul directly, yeah. spend the week up here. They get like a roof over their head. You get a room somewhere? Yeah. Or a tent outside? Yeah, either way. Um, we will put the contact info for Paul in the description, which it's really everywhere. It's not, There's not that much, but there's a few things that would be great to do. I would, you want to spend I would love it if we could get some meat birds. It's probably too late, but um, I would love it if we could get some, you know, to do, um, to do the winter with because it's looking pretty... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if anybody out there wants to come and learn from Paul one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, for a week or so and help out yeah. and do some gardening and stuff, then uh, contact, uh, what's, uh, what's the phone number? I Probably know my number would be best. It's 360-461-3461. And I guess that's out on the internet now. Yeah. Well, it's also on your voicemail. Yeah. And so, and yeah, one more time again, that phone number was what? Or, or just call the house, 360-683-4477, because then either one of us could get it, and if they want to contact me, my number's there okay. as well. And so if you guys want to come out and learn from Paul, then there you go. Let's see what we have in here. Um, anyone else find the volume low? Does anybody find the volume low? Can you hear us? I mean, I, I think little. my voice carries. I don't know if that's something I can fix like right now. now. We're kind of far away from the phone. Um, 
Let's see if I can screw this up. Settings. No. Okay, well, we'll try this. Let's see if I can screw this up. Settings. Okay, how's that? Is that a little bit better? Anybody out there? Does that help out at all? Carol has nothing to do with that. And they can't see it. Carol, what? Oh, no, you're good. Um, yeah, the volume is what the volume is. I don't know how to fix that right now. Um, oh, volume's good. Okay. If not, um, again, we're going to put all of this. I have three cameras recording and two microphones going, so we're going to edit this and put it out for you guys at a later date. Uh, maybe in little bits, questions at a time or something like that. Cut out all the ums and ahs and me messing with cameras. Okay, Jamaica. let's see. We have... Oh! Hi, Paul. Can't wait to see you out in the garden in your off-road vehicle. We are in a little drought here in Houston and haven't had a lot of... Haven't had to water with the wood chips. Oh, so that's cool. So even in the drought they're in Houston, they're not uh, having to water. So they brought it up. Tell us about your tank that you want to get. The wheelchair or the, oh, the track it's, chair? It's, it's, it's like a, it has tracks, which is really nice for out in the grass and gar in the yard because it's, it's a good, tra good traction. It's really helpful, you know, because it takes me a little while to get out to the orchard and garden, you know. So this will really help me. And if I have to, you know, haul brushes and stuff, I can put a wagon to it and take it to the piles. So it will really, really make it much easier for me to get around. Now, you stopped doing the tours because it was... I, I, I walk so slowly. You know, really got my attention. Some people came out here to do some video on, on, on me. You know, so they went out to the, or, or, the garden. I was going to come out to see them. And they got tired of waiting because it took me so long to get there. You know, so I'm thinking, like, this, this ain't is, working. This is not working. <laughs> so when you get your tank, which is what I'm calling it. So it's oh, a tank. Okay. <laughs> when you get that, will you start doing tours again? I don't think so. I don't want to. I don't. I. Sure. I would rather. I prefer just to visit with people. You know, answer questions, and they on their own can walk around and. and oh. so four four of them came here Sunday from. Um, uh, Idaho. Idaho, and and we just asked questions. And they walked around. It seemed to work out really well. It was really funny. He was out just weeding, and and all of a sudden these four women show up, and he goes, "Who are they? Why are they here?" And then he goes, "Oh, it's Sunday." <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. So with the new way of doing it, I know that you started doing Sundays only because you didn't really ever get time to spend in the garden. And that's when you were walking around better because people would just show up and <laughs> ask questions and talk to you and stuff. And you'd talk to them. And then as they were leaving, somebody else would show up yeah. and you never could you cut your get grass. Done. <laughs> Are you only doing Sundays for people coming up and... Um, saying hi and walking around the garden asking Somebody questions. Somebody was here yesterday. He just, he's really spontaneous. He just show people call and they show up and he goes, okay. I mean, if he's home. Yeah, I think, I think now because, you know, I'm, I'm so limited to what I can do, it's probably okay anytime. <laughs> but just, it's still probably preferred to call sad. ahead and see if, you know, you're going to be around that day or yeah, something. Yeah, it's best and to call, call because I, sometimes I do, do go to town. I, I have a, a toothbrush that I got to take care of, so trees and things and so on so it's best to call to make sure i'm home and then the sabbath the yeah. sabbath we like to like, like like not to do anything on Saturday. and that's for saturdays yes so friday night to saturday night. sorry i showed up today <laughs> um we had a little mix up in our schedule we they thought i was coming tomorrow and i thought i was coming today so uh, this isn't work it's fun yeah let's see Paul, do you believe the drought and extreme heat, especially out in your state, is caused by global warming or just a cycle of the earth that the earth is going through? No, I think it's man-made engineering intentionally. It's, it's, it's not natural. So you're thinking like chemtrails and yeah. climate control instead of 
uh, pollution right. or just changes in the. I think it's. I think it's man manipulation. Right now, what do you think about the state of the supply chain? Uh, uh, they're asking me, what do I think about the state of the supply chain? Come on, man! Inflation. Um, it's almost too late to prep. That's my thoughts on it. Um, get your beans, get your rice, get your gardens going, water. get your knowledge going, Berkey. get your water. Um, get your Berkey. Just the basics in life, just, you got to start now if you haven't already. Um, easiest way is everything that you touch throughout the day. You grab uh, cereal in the morning, you grab uh, some toast, you uh, drive your car to whatever, you use some toothpaste, you use laundry soap, whatever the stuff that you touch every day that you buy every week, just buy a little bit more as you can. Uh, if you have the money for it, buy a little bit more than what you can. Um, I, I built a shed just to store the beans and the rice and the flour and the sugar and the everything that I can that are staples. Um, just to store it. I turned it into a walk-in cooler because Paul has a walk-in cooler and I wasn't going to let him be the only one that could have one. <laughs> so I got one. Uh, I'm getting chickens. I'm building a chicken coop right now. Videos about that will be coming out at some point. And I could put probably up to 100 birds in there if I needed to. I'm planning for about 50 people plus the people in our neighborhood. Uh, so that's where my prepping is at. And that's where my food storage is at. Inflation, it's not going down. We might not financial advice at all. I'm not even playing on YouTube, a financial expert, but I think we probably have one more boom in the stock market. And after that, it'll, I think it'll just crash. So we're paying off everything that we can, uh, try to get completely out of debt and try to buy solar electric is the next one to come. We're already talking about having brownouts and stuff like that. So, yeah. I think it's very, I think it's very um, interesting how. Um, oh, hey, you know what? what? Hey, are you guys hearing Joe Biden on the. What? <laughs> um, I can't mute the phone because then they won't have sound. Hold on, I gotta push some buttons here. Okay, can you guys still hear me okay? Yeah? Okay, good. Sorry about that. Yeah, um, the notification on my phone is Joe Biden saying, come on, man. And so I've been getting messages and oh, stuff like that. So funny. she's listening to the stream right now. Uh -huh. Um, nice. And she's hearing, come on, man, come on, man, come on, man. That's funny. That's funny. Okay. Well, I, well, just, I started to say, if it's all right, um, that I think it's really um, providential or the Lord's direction that, you know, Paul went through eight years of really bad depression, almost eight years, and then God opened up this opportunity for ministry for him. And... Often, it's really important to remember that when you're going through hard times, God's trying to do something. And if you're willing to listen, if you're willing to yield to it, he often will manifest and give you something in return that's far greater than you ever could imagine. And I just think it was really providential that God used him to, to um, help so many people be encouraged about gardening. Because, as you can see, um, we really need it right now. And so I'm grateful that the people that have heard and have done it, have done it. And, you know, there's certainly a lot of people that were doing it before that. But I think in, in light of what's happening right now, I know that it was God that really did it and made it happen. Because we're, we're messed up just like everybody else. You know, we need God. And, um, and, uh. It's just we're willing. We're willing to 
and be obedient and, and fully press in and, and know him more through all of this. So I'm seeing all these grateful hearts coming in through the feed and just really appreciate. I'll have to read it to Paul later because it's too much to try to do it now. So one of the questions goes back to the mobility chair and they're asking me if we made the donation limit to get Paul's mobility chair. We are, I think the last time I checked it, about almost a third of the way there. So there was like, 16, 17,000, something like that donated Six, so far. I think it was 15, almost 16. Um, it's just we need to get the word out. So if anybody can go to that video, let's buy Paula Tank and just share that. Put it on blast everywhere. Um, any of the forums, gardening forums you're in, anyone that's ever um, heard of Back to Eden Gardening or... Uh, anyone you think might need to learn how to garden, uh, share this method with them. And hopefully we can get that um, that goal reached. I don't know if there's a time limit on it or not. Carol, do you know? If there's a time uh, limit on it? I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I can't remember if there is one. Yeah, I don't know either. You'd have to ask. We'll but there have been uh, a bunch of donations on there, and uh, definitely thank you all for those. Um, have you guys seen any of the comments or any of the messages that went along with any of the donations or anything like that? Have you been on there at I've all? I've been reading a lot of them. I haven't read a lot to him because it's I, get, I, re I read them just before I go to bed at night, and it's just really precious. It's really wonderful. I'm gonna, I was thinking of just copying the page, you know, making a copy so I can put that in. Also, on that video, and we're going to have to get your post put back up there because it, I don't know, it got deleted or something. Your video? Yeah. Video? No, no, that comment that you put in there that I was going to pin oh, to the top. Oh, again? Well, yeah, I just, and I was too tired to deal with it. I was working oh, okay. on my, like, fourth double in a row or something like that. I was okay. just not messing with it, but we'll, well do maybe that it's just tonight. not meant to be right yet. But we'll you can it. get in there and comment to any of those comments that people are putting in there and chat with the people too so yeah it's just a lot yeah it really is <laughs> plus you know you yeah know I'm, I'm kind of busy but at the same time i just want people to know i'm grateful yeah really we're grateful it's just very sweet and generous and all the comments are really uplifting and encouraging and i've got to get you to i, I read some of them but not very many <laughs> not all of them Hello from Eastern Washington. Jerry, where are you? Are you near me? I am, where am I? I'm Southeastern Washington. I think I've said, I'm near Tri-Cities. So, uh, Jerry, if you're near Tri-Cities, you want to, I don't know, head out to the range one day or something like that, let me know. Uh, volume's good. Hello from Jamaica. Yeah, I saw that. Wow. Hello from North Carolina. How has Paul been how doing? Has, oh, how long has Paul been doing tours of his property? How long have you been? Eleven years. Well, when he first tours. first came, you know, we started doing it right after that. So, um, right after, or yeah. before? Yeah, it was about. I want to say it was about a year after my first video. Okay. Then you started actually doing tours, but how long have you been uh, just showing people around your garden and teach? I mean, it was. Probably after the documentary, or was it before then? So, uh, you know, rare, uh, occasionally before, but after the documentary, quite a lot, you know, quite a bit. Was it like, I, I don't know, I think I was here maybe 10 months after the documentary came out. So, yeah. Croatia. Hello from Croatia. We miss you, Paul. Sounds good, sounds good. Okay, good. Hello from Tennessee. Oh yeah, chemtrails and geoengineering are poison. Hello all, will Paul be able to New go... New Zealand. Sorry. You're good. <laughs> will Paul be able to go between the rows in the garden when driving a tank? No, but I, I can walk when I get there, but just getting there, the tank's going to be so helpful. And then if I have to, you know, haul stuff to the chicken pen, you know, it'll be really great to ride my wagon. Or if I'm pruning my trees, I can take the brush to the burn pile. So 
It's just these distances are going to make such a difference to me. Really, getting across the yard yeah, to the garden, exactly. getting from the garden all the way to the chickens, yeah. and getting down to the end of the driveway. And then you know, you know, I got to drag the wagon, you know, with me full of brush and stuff. So it's just going to be really helpful. Now that's going to be an outdoor only thing, or can that I don't work inside? I don't want to. I don't want my house. Yeah. Because I think the tracks would. No, no, and I'm fine in the house. I, you know, I, I walk around fine in the house. <laughs> and it's not that you're in pain. I have no pain. That's the beauty of it. No, there's no pain, just lack of mobility. Let me see. Um, we are going to skip that. Try to keep a little bit out of the politics. Um, politics. Yeah, there's one about. Legalizing marriage between underage boys and dogs. I don't know what. Just yeah. we skip. That's, that's not politics. That's perversion. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I guess I answered. So I guess we answered it. <laughs> <laughs> um, mine back to Eden Garden is thriving. I'm very thankful for the knowledge and thanks for sharing it with us. I love how Paul does the potatoes. Mine seem to be doing well. Yeah, I put potatoes down five years ago and just forgot about them. One day I'll need them. <laughs> and every year they keep coming up and coming up. And I was telling you earlier that uh, in, uh, we have a coffee can on our kitchen table. We put all of our scraps and stuff on. And sometimes a piece of potato gets in there, raw potato or... Because we, we don't eat the potatoes quick enough. Yeah, or yeah, when they don't get eaten quick enough, or like, yeah, instead of throwing them out in the trash, we put them in the compost pile. Baby girl goes out into the yard somewhere and digs a hole and buries a hole, you know, empties the can into the hole, covers it up. And then a week or two later, I'm out mowing the grass and I'm like, are those potato leaves <laughs> just growing out of the middle of the grass? I'm like, okay, she's got to start planting these somewhere else. <laughs> um, that was you. Greetings from New Jersey. You've transformed the way I look at gardening. You've also reminded me how important it is to remember that our Lord is the architect of it all. God bless you, sir. So that brings me up to something that Carol was kind of talking about, and I don't know if this is going to happen or not, but tell me about your, you were talking about maybe starting a channel where you could talk to the people, maybe have a little Bible study or something like that. Tell you, I don't know. We were just talk. We were talking about it, and he he was interested slightly. So I'm waiting for him to get a little more interested. Would that be kind of like a, a weekly kind of a thing where you guys just sit down and kind of pull whenever. a scripture out of the or yeah, just random? Kind of whenever. I'm just seeing people. I'm being inspired because I'm seeing people use their platform to encourage people, and that's my big thing. Is that I think people need to be encouraged right now, and I don't feel sad. I don't feel. Um, challenged about what's going on in the world as much as I feel it's really sad to see how people are giving in to strongholds and things that are inhibiting them from really going on in God and I just feel like it's really uh, a platform we, we've been given and I just have been praying about maybe how God want, might, might want to use it and you know I talked to Paul about it and he's not opposed to it but he's just not he's not a leader when it comes to that kind of thing he doesn't want to go you know what i mean i i get vision i'm a visionary big time and he's more of a okay i'll answer questions <laughs> well <laughs> you know whereas i'm kind of like okay let's go you know but opposites attract so yeah. it's the way it's been for us for almost 50 years and that's the way it's gonna be <laughs> <laughs> it's okay so if that's something that you guys maybe want to kind of push them towards, uh, let them know, and uh, maybe Just, you'll see them on the YouTubes with their own little channel, uh, uh, doing a little scripture read or something. There's just so much out there that people are dealing with right now that I feel like um, there's tools. There's tools in the Word that can help people learn to overcome. And, um, you know, if they're willing and humble and able to, to hear and interact even, you know, I think it's really a good thing, you know, for, because I know that people go, well, I don't understand how, you know, you're not depressed and you're, 
you know, not worrying about this or that. And I said, well, you know, sometimes I do get concerned about my children, especially. But, you know, I don't, I can't ruminate on it. I can't live there. I have to go on. And I know that, that because of that, it's, you know, God can use you to, because you learn to be an overcomer. It's not been easy, you know. And just to give people some tools to help them understand and overcome, because it's all in the Word. It's a very, it's a very practical, supernatural book. It's not a book you can just sit down and read and say, okay, you know, because it, it's got a lot of stuff in it that people don't understand, and it seems like contradictions and all kinds of things, but then you start seeing it as tensions, and you realize that, that uh, God says what he says and does what he does for a purpose. And, um, and it's, we're living in biblical times, really incredibly biblical times. There's a podcast I listen to, which is what is it? American Readout. Uh, it's John Jacob Schmidt and Lady Liberty, and they have a radio show on a Christian radio station in Spokane, I want to say. Hmm. And they do five days a week um, in the mornings, and it's like a half hour show. But uh, Lady Liberty will just grab the Bible and randomly open and read a passage out of there and. It just kind of every single time seems to be the exact same, the exact thing you need to hear. Or, I mean, I don't know how, it's just divine intervention right well, there, just saying open to this chapter, this verse, and, yeah, and read away. And then it just, you look around the world that's going on, and you're like, yeah, yeah, I needed to hear that one today. So well, that's, uh, that's kind of awesome. That's mm -hmm. kind of God. Yeah. And that's, yeah, and that's, I want to. Like I said, we have a platform. Why not take advantage of it? I don't want to hide my, you know, um, when you have light, you know, you don't want to hide it under a bushel. You know, you don't want to hide it. You need to ask God, God, what is it that you want me to do with this? And like I said, when you have a platform, you you should take advantage of it if it's him. If it's not, well, then I'm not going to do it. But if it's him, I want to go in faith and walk through that, that door, see what he does. Because, I mean, Paul... He knows the word, you know, he really knows the word, and I know the word, but not like he does. He knows it, and, you know, because he's uniquely him, and I'm uniquely me, so we're, from our giftings, we see things, and, um, you know, respond to things differently, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, um, you know, um, I'm a, I'm an intercessor, I'm a prophetic intercessor, and he's more of a teacher, and a very, um, he sees things, but not from the same way as I do. And so it's very, um, we can't, we really do compliment each other. <laughs> so, um, anyway. Um, one more, and then we'll get back to guarding guys. Um, tell me how you hear the voice of God. I had such a struggle trying to hear that. And I thought for years I couldn't hear. And then my wife got this teaching by Mark Virgler that really opened my eyes. And he, he said... God's voice comes as a spontaneous thought, and all of a sudden the door was open. See, I'm, I'm looking for a still small voice. That's what everybody says. I'm not hearing any voice, still or small. But when he says spontaneous thought, it completely opened the door. I was, I've been hearing my whole life. I just never knew what it was. And that day changed everything. It was so awesome. I felt so thankful for that word. Because well, yeah, well, often we think it's us, and it, he does come through our thoughts. But he, he, he speaks to us in so many ways through the word, of course, is primarily. If we are obedient to the word and read the word and obey it, apply the principles, don't just read it. Because like I said, it's, it's a supernatural book. And then he'll talk to us through circumstances or situations or, um, you know, like you just said right now, talking about the radio program you listen to. And it's like that might not speak to me, but it's speaking to you. And that's all that really matters, you know, is that God's speaking to you through them in a way that's very unique. And I've gone through times when people were sending me emails, like daily, that were just like, whoa, this is so relevant to what I'm going through. Or different things through life that make you realize that God is speaking. He's speaking all the time. It's just whether or not we're able to hear. And you have to always, I think it's really, really important, it's imperative, that you always use the parameter of the word. You always make sure that it's within the context of God's word, that it doesn't conflict with the word of God. And I tell people, too, is that and right now I'm actually, I'm actually going to teach this uh, to some midwives in Montana next week. And so I'm really 
fresh with this right now because it's all talk. But anyway, a lot of it anyway, not all of it. But anyway, so I just feel like it's really important to use the Word of God as your parameter, as your guide. And always, if you have a way of journaling and if you can hear a spontaneous thought that you wonder if it's God, go to different elders, people that you know that know the Word of God to see whether or not it's something that comparatively, because even young believers can hear God's voice. It's just whether or not you know. And that's the prerequisite. You really do need to know Yeshua. You need to know Jesus. And it's um, that Bible becomes a whole different book to you. Um, it's not just a book. Once you you meet him, and um, if it doesn't, you know, I think that um, you just pursue it, because I know when I first became a believer, I didn't really get so much about what the Bible said, because I wasn't just reading the King James. I was reading, you know, other book, other Bible translations at the time, because I did really want to understand. But um, you need to know the author of the book to really get it, and I know that sounds exclusive and that's not so politically correct nowadays but sorry <laughs> it's made a huge difference there's just no way it's just a book about a lot of tragedy and crazies if you just read it as a book so the other day um started my vacation and i got home from work and i was all excited there was a brown box sitting on the stove and i'm like oh really want a donut and since then i've just been oh i want a donut oh i want a donut and then we finally we got donuts on the way out here for a camping trip how do you differentiate <laughs> i want a donut voice from well is it biblical God. i don't know your body's it's a really temple of the holy ghost you know you want to mostly you know take heed to what the word says in corinthians where it says if god if we destroy our body god says he'll destroy us but how do you I mean, how do you differentiate that voice? Like, I wonder why I decided to go right today instead of left. There's, there, something compelled me. I heard that thought. Like, no, stop here. And then there was an accident, like ten feet in front of me. I mean, how do you how do you differentiate just random thoughts in your head to it actually being God? Well, that might have been God if you if you heard stop here. But how do I differentiate that one from I want a donut? The fruit of it. The fruit of it. Now, is wanting a donut <laughs> godly? And it, is it something that you think is biblical? I mean, I'm not saying you should never indulge on some level. No, you know, I'm not totally legalistic. But on the same yeah. level, at the same time, it's like if you heard stop here and there was an accident 10 feet in front of you, I would say that that was probably angelic or God right. speaking and saying, you know, stop. You know, for, for me, I'm always looking for confirmation. You know, yeah. the says the mouth of truth, three witnesses, truth is always confirmed. Mm -hmm. Now, whenever God speaks to me, he gives confirmation. And then when I get confirmation, then I know I heard this was exactly. significant. So you have that, that spontaneous voice, and then you're driving down the road, and you see a sign that kind of says the same thing, yeah. and then you hear on the radio this other thing. You yeah. keep having the same confirmation, you know, confirmation and then... Or, or like all of a sudden you you see five fifty five on your on your cell phone and you kind of go wow that's a number of grace you know and I just all of a sudden break out into thanksgiving to God you know triple grace thank you God for your grace you know what I mean things like that that prompt you to worship God and praise God and because you know what so much of what's going on today is about spiritual warfare and if we don't know the weapons of warfare it's like it's it renders you pretty incompetent spiritually and like worship and praise and you know it's god's spirit prompting us to exalt him and to love him and to and to and and like i said the the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds and there's a lot of strongholds right now in in our world you know both physical emotional mental spiritual good and bad and we want to really um, emphasize those things that are good from God and get his messages because he, he, like I said, he's always talking. And it's whether or not we acknowledge it or understand it that matters. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Yeah. <laughs> 
You want to talk about that? What is it? I'm sorry. No, I don't. I don't. Okay. Oh. It's, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Let's skip along here. This is my second year, gar year garden using wood chips, thanks to you. Um, my flower bed has wood chips and roses grow like wild. Yeah. I put lots of leaves on my iris bed and they are giant now. Hello from Croatia. Oh, I'm hello. catching up to where you were earlier. Um, yeah, Croatia. Hello, hello. Oh, there we go. Um, D. Paul, hello. You definitely changed our lives. I just found you recently. My heart is broken over no sun. We uh, were in Gig Harbor. We've got this one precious new gardening thing. Now no sun. You guys, if you're in Gig Harbor, get a hold of Paul. You're pretty close. You should come on out and see the place sometime. It's awesome. Uh, get some strawberries, get some apples, get some, it's all nummy. The kale is unbelievable. It's my favorite now. Hello from New Zealand. Um, Troy, Montana. You're heading out to Montana? Where? Bozeman. Bozeman. Bozeman? Yeah. And what's that for? Um, I'm going to be a keynote speaker at a midwifery conference. Wow. In Montana. Mm -hmm. Seems like the workshop. epicenter of everything. It's It seems like a weird place like Vegas or something where thousands and millions of people are. Everybody's going out to Montana to go to a midwifery convention? Or no, 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 no. Seminar? It's not. It's going to be pretty small. It's just going to be more like a workshop. Oh. But I think it's for four days or something. Wow. Yeah, but it's it's good. We, like we were gonna integrate Yellowstone and go into a friend of mine's um, little cafe down in in uh, Livingston and stuff. But now that, but now that, you know, that's been imploded. Basically, you know, it's not happening. Um, hello from Georgia. Let's see. Can you ask Paul if a peat tree looks sick? What are the most common problems? I'm here in Arizona with my peach, or most of my peach trees are fine, but some <coughs> are sickly. Well, uh -huh. I, always, I always, you know, treating disease, it's all about health. You know, the whole idea of treating symptoms, you know, with drugs or sprays or whatever, is only temporary. And so you want to build the soil up and get the tree well. In my experience here, since I've been here, when I came here, I had all the diseases in my trees that you could have. And today I have none, so I know what I'm talking about. When you have nutrient-dense soil, the plants are healthy and they resist disease. It's really awesome how it works. <coughs> uh, let's just skip one here. Let's see. Uh, hi from Georgia. Any advice on moles destroying my yard and blueberry bushes? The Lord blessed me through your gardening. How do you get rid of the moles? Mole trap. Which one? It's a Victor Mole Trap. It's the only one that works. The one with the spikes don't. This Victor Mole Trap, it's a it's a spring thing, and it's so strong, you have to have a little extenders to pull it together because you can't with your hands. But that trap works really great. <laughs> He's a pro at it. He cracks right. me up. And, and it's about <laughs> setting the trap. Most people don't know how to set them. Basically, you have a mole run, a straight run. You, what you want to do is dig that down to the run and then pack dirt into either side of it and bring the dirt level in between Right at the same level and put your trap over. So as a mole comes through and pushes the dirt up, it triggers a trap. But you're going to want to make sure. People, people just don't have to set the trap. But I tell you, if you set it right, and I get them every time. It's just, it's awesome. Okay. Um, Use garlic. I don't know what that's from. Maybe that's for the moles. Um. Hi, Paul. I think often about how you mentioned... Uh, or how you mentioned would learn a bit. Did I just go down the wrong way? Um, oh, okay. So um, you spoke before about um, how you would learn a bit and then get stubborn and go your own way and then have to remember uh, to be humble again. And it's very validating. Uh, hello, at Louisiana, watching your channel has inspired to start a garden of my own. Really, everybody should be starting their own gardens right now. 
that's the thing. Back in uh, like the Depression or World War II or whatever, we had victory gardens. Yeah. Everybody was gardening. The government was promoting growing your own food because we the don't have enough was. food to feed you. And now, what, like at the beginning of the beer virus, they stopped even allowing seeds to be sold. And now there's just none. And now that we finally get seeds, there's no fertilizers out there, which we wouldn't use, but still for the world, um, it's just like at every level, they're trying to stop people from eating somehow. Well, I think it's intentional on this little, this little powers that be that are trying to reduce population. They're intent on bringing the population down. This is, a, you know, this is their goal. And they're making every effort to do it. And I'm, I, I've been telling people for years, it's going to become not optional for us to grow own food. We're going to have to. And we're there. And I think it's really, I think it's really, um, it was a God thing that this film came out and this revelation has gone on hold because we're, God's showing us how that in spite of everything failing, you can have a garden, grow your own food, and you're fine. And that population control, I mean, I hear that all over the place. Oh, yeah, it's a big deal. Uh, Schwab said it. Um, I think Bill Gates fact checked me on that. Bill guy. Gates is totally Bill Gates motivated. Has been big talking time about it. Bring it on, so. His father was a eugenist. You know, I mean, this is, and then Planned Parenthood is all put together to diminish the population. I'm, I'll never forget when that got put together when I was in, in uh, I was raised Catholic, so I was in Catholic school, and they, they told us they were eugenicists. You know, it's pretty clear that that's. That's why they did. Yeah, let's see if I can get these words right. Shabbat, Shalom, Shabbat. and Shabbat. Sabbath. Sabbath. Uh, peace to Paul and Carol. May Y H B H. Yahweh. Yahweh. Okay. Yahweh. I hear it, That's but I have never seen it. It's his name. Bless you both for your service to your fellow man. We would love to have that study with Paul and Carol. Well, there's one vote for doing it. Just feel real quick. Yeah, I haven't gotten there yet. I love encouraging <laughs> the Bible, oh, yeah, Bible study idea too. Yes, do it. Okay. Bible study would be fantastic. It would help thousands because if you have a large following, sign me up. Uh, yes, yes to Bible study. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Well, I guess that's a lot of yeses. Um, if I lived close, I would definitely come help you guys weekly. Mm. How about uh, if you come to uh, look at the garden and stuff, pull a weed or two. Well, maybe not because it might actually be food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's, it's hard because yeah, Even the weeds you have are to food. know kind of what you're looking at. <laughs> the, I remember there was a video we did. I think it was called Eating Paul's Weeds. And it was a uh, lamb's quarter, maybe, I think. Not Myers lettuce. And, yeah, Myers lettuce. And it was just there, and you're like, yeah, I got to weed all this out here, eat some. Like, what? No, those are your weeds. No, no, it's good. Good weeds. <laughs> um, God bless you both. Any prayers? Hi, Paul and Carol. Hope you're doing well. Are you doing well? I'm well, yeah. Carol, are you doing well? It's been hard, you know. It's been hard watching yeah. But it's okay. I mean, I know God's grace is sufficient. He's mm -hmm. proven himself over to me and over and over again. Uh, you both would be so interesting to listen to. Back to the Bible studies. Uh, my volume isn't loud enough to hear them very well. Well, you know what? Mm -hmm. I don't. I can't fix the volume anymore. Mm -hmm. um, just wait until the videos come out, and uh, you'll hear it all there. Yeah, maybe turn it. Turn up your volume. I can't do it. Okay, for some reason, somebody put in here, Paul grew up in Eagle Rock, California. Okay, someone asked where. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, he, he grew up in Montecito Heights, just above East L.A. And I grew up in Highland Park, Eagle Rock area. And then we had a home right in the, in the, in, in the Eagle Rock area just before we moved here. Where did you meet? Oh, I don't boy. think we've ever done that. Oh, boy. My brother and her brother, who were friends with my brother, um... <laughs> Asked her to go out with me, and <laughs> so she did us a favor. And it was a, he a, pressured me pressured almost me. every week. He'd come when my brother gets out of Nam, I want you to take to go out with him. And I, I was going, Oh, see what happened is his brother had a crush on me and he wanted mm. to set me up with his with his with him. 
Now, he'd deny it, but listen, Dan, no, if you're listening to this, don't you lie. <laughs> 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 but instead of, you know, because he was, anyway, long story, but um, he just would tell me every time I'd see him, almost, you know, every week or something, he'd say, I want you to go out with my brother. Please feel sorry for him because he, he's getting out of Vietnam, and I just really think it'd be really great if you, if you just did me a favor and went out with him. So finally, <laughs> finally he gets out of Vietnam, and I'm going, oh, boy. So I had so much pressure from his brother. And so he took me out, and I was so uncomfortable with him because his car was immaculate. He's very OCD. And I basically you feel like, in fact, you'd tell me to wipe my feet before I got in this car. <laughs> That's how OCD he was. Thank God he's changed. But <laughs> anyway, he took me down to a place in Santa Monica. It was so impressive. This really great restaurant that was closed. <laughs> <laughs> nice way to save a buck. <laughs> I guess we're I going know. to McDonald's then. I tried. No, he, he really thought it was open. It was it was really embarrassing for him. Poor guy. And you know, the guys that got out of Vietnam, I don't know if you guys remember that were around in those days. I felt so sorry for them because they were so displaced and they were made to be shunned so much. It was evil that that I think it was really awkward anyway. And it was awkward because he knew that his brother was setting us up and anyway. And then and then um, I got saved. I met I met God and um, and a good friend of ours, a mutual friend of ours, which was a Hell's Angel. He was the president of the Hell's Angels in, in Glendale, California, Dwayne. I think he passed away not long ago, but anyway, he, he, uh, I went, I was, <laughs> he was at the Bales Bondsman right across the street from the police station in, in LA, and they had a whole backyard, back room full of marijuana kilos before it was legal. <laughs> and so it was, <laughs> Paul was, used to help transfer that stuff. Anyway, he was a good friend of Paul's, and I knew him kind of just because of that incident, and he says, Hey, Paul Gauchy's really into the same thing that you're into. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, he became a believer in Jesus. And I went, he did? And he says, yeah, he's up in some Bible school up in Canada. And uh, you need to, you know, get a hold of him. You guys had something in common, you know. And I went, uh, I don't know. You know, and so I don't know what happened, but I think we started writing to each other. Or you wrote to me or something. I don't know what happened. But then he came down from um, from Canada because he went to school there for a year, and uh, a mutual friend of ours had just died. So there was a lot of drama and trauma around everything, and and he kept every I tried to ditch him, but he just kept pursuing me. No, well, it was worth it, huh? <laughs> you find something that you want, you just keep going and going and going wow, until you get it. Was, it was. Uh, it was really funny, but anyway, so that's how we got together, basically. Okay, let's see. He really knew the word, and he, and it was just the Lord that I really fell in love with, and it was kind of special. Both of the interesting things. No, no, I skipped that. Okay, I grow in. Oh, I hate these questions about my zone and that kind of stuff because you don't really know everybody's zones but we'll see what the question is uh i grow in zone 7b we're what 6b Six I, I think we're seven aren't we i'm not right. sure uh oh just like you or just like paul okay let me try this again i grow in 7b new york just like paul thought me, I'm so thankful I found your channel. God bless, and I will try to come in August. Wow, from New York. That's awesome. Uh, Paul changed my whole life. I teach everyone around me using the video. Gardening in Arizona was the hardest thing ever until God put Paul's video in my life nine years ago. <laughs> Mother Nature is modest. She loves to be covered. <laughs> All right. Um, Heavenly Father told us to, or told us so much. Let's see. Uh, the 
Holy Ghost has a very distinct language. Those that look for signs, see them. 8A and 8B. Oh, where we're at? Yeah. Here's one. Oh, I've been uh, waiting for a live from you all. So glad to cop and I caught this. Bless you all. Sending love. Hi, Paul. I try to keep the Creator's commandments, so I respect the Fifth Commandment. The Fifth Commandment applies to both humans and animals because they are all created by God. Thou shalt not kill? I'm not sure what it is. Fifth Fifth commandment. Fourth is Shabbat. The fifth is, which one is it? Gabriel's going to find it. Potato beetles appeared on my potatoes. What can they do not to break the you order? Shall not kill. Huh? Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not murder. Yeah, all right. Will they? Give me one Bible moment. Okay, go on. <laughs> so, okay, let's go back to that. Um, I think they're probably going back to, like, meat chickens. Um, um, vegetarians. Um, the, um, yeah, you can Parenthood, Population Control. Oh. Oh, is that what you think they're referring to? Yeah, I think that's what it's She's about. been watching it live, live, and I'm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, let's go to, because um, you don't eat too much meat. Um, I think that you do lamb on yeah, Passover. Lamb and sheep, yeah. Um, and if you go somewhere, he, he, and somebody he eats offers it when I make it, it for him, but he doesn't eat it. Eat it himself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, what do you think? Do you think that thou shalt not kill, or I believe it's thou shalt not murder? Right. Well, if you look at if, kind you, of if, you, if you look at um, those things, and, you know, after the flood, you know, all they had was. Um, Animal meat because there's no there's no plant life, you know. So it's just what they what they ate, you know. And and then if you look at if you if you read Exodus, the priests ate a ton of meat. And it's just like when you realize the, the incredible volume, all the sacrifices that were brought, they ate they ate, they ate the meat, and so it's just like a huge volume of meat was eaten by the priests, you know. All through so the, yeah, it's just you know it depends on where you're at, you know. I, I think that sometimes people, um, it's almost like their diet becomes their God. So you got to really keep things in perspective. It shouldn't be um, so much of an issue that, I mean, I think that it's important to eat clean. I think it's important to eat healthy. But to just try and tell people they have to be a vegetarian to be godly or vegetarian to do this or whatever, it's just a little over the top for me but you know i feel like it's really important that you go with your own personal convictions but when it's not super clear in the bible you can't really say what people should and shouldn't be doing you know you can say your own convictions but as far as like telling others that they can or can't eat meat i just think it's i think for perspective though is that is that initially in the garden they didn't eat meat that's right and for the next thousand years when jesus comes to rule the millennium even the animals in nature won't eat meat because the lion's going to fly down with the lamb. Right. So the, I think the ideal was for us to be eating, you know, plant, you know, and again, God gave us our diet in Genesis 1. Plants, vegetables, fruits, and seeds is what I give the people food. Right. You know, so that's really the, the design. But then, I, I think I remember, wasn't there a point when um, it was, after something happened, it was allowable for, uh, to eat meat. It came after the flood. Yeah, there was, was no eating meat else. prior to the flood. Oh, okay. Because then, there wasn't any plant life. I mean, it was just really pretty limited. You say um, from time to time that the lion will lay down with the lamb, and people love to put this in the chat for those, uh, or the comments for those when you say that. Um, they say that I think it's the wolf will lay down with the lamb. Well, it says is it lion? No, it is wolf. I think it's wolf. What is, what is wolf on? I was just wondering if there was a, a part that I just, I mean, I don't, I'm not so well, I can't memorize the whole Bible, but I thought it was 
or they've been telling me it's the wolf, and I'm like, well, Paul says it's lion, and I'm just going to go with that for now. But I, then I started looking into it, and I think it's wolf. It is. Okay. Yeah. But I like lion, because it just, it flows. Lion, lamb. Okay, um, let's see, do we, okay, potato beetles appear on my potatoes. What can I do to not break the order and not run out of potatoes? So how do I get rid of them without messing with the garden? Improve, increase the soil quality. I'm finding in my experience that when you have healthy plants, the insects don't bother them. It's across the board. Be honest. And so, the, the, you see, the whole allopathic um, approach is treat symptoms, which is not the problem. You want to get health is, is, the, is the goal. And so if you bring mm -hmm. health in, all the problems leave. And so my, my, my sense is just keep covering those those potatoes with wood chips, build that soil, and I think the um, bug dish will leave. And how long do you, I mean, the videos, the, the film uh, the girls put out, it's been, what, 10 years now? Yeah. Um, if I started back then, how long until, I mean, without it being 40 years, how long until I get a garden like yours? It's progressional. You'll see every year it improves. It's just steady improvement. And even at this point, as good as it is, it keeps getting better. Because that's the nature of God. God is all about multiplication. He doesn't, he just is, he's not static. He keeps blessing because that's his character. So let's go into, like, if I started 10 years ago, how, I mean, I started wrong and I, this is my channel and this is what I tell the world about. And I failed so miserably many times doing this. So let's start from scratch. Purest method, how to start without adding any amendments or any, uh, anything else. What is the, the simplest, easiest, maybe it takes longer way to do a backdating garden. It's covering, it's all about covering. And so I, I like wood chips because that's what's in the, you know, if someone were to ask you where in the planet is the most fertile soil, it's in the forest. And that, and, and that soil is created by needles, leaves and twigs. And so to me, wood chips are the ideal covering. You know, um, grass clippings work well, spot, but then they, they get wet, they're slimy. Wood chips is just such a comfortable material to work with. Always, always dry, always clean, and just produces amazing results. So do I just dump eight feet of wood chips? Not eight feet, a covering. If you do a garden space, four inches max, because you got to access the soil to plant your seeds. So if you have more than that, you got to move too much. But or if you have existing plants, you can put as deep as you want, because you're not going to access the soil. Up to the bottom of Well, I think people right now are desperate, and they want to start a garden, and so if they've got a hard pan or something, they're probably going to have to do some kind of tilling or something. No, the tilling, here's the problem with tilling, is it doesn't loosen the soil. It immediately compacts everything. But so what happens is they're not going to have a garden this year, is what you're saying. They can, they can, with heavy, nasty soil, plant their seeds in it, just scrape it, get the seed up and put wood chips over it, and that soil will immediately go into a change to start improving. It's, it's phenomenal. If you look at hard pan soils, weeds are growing in it. Mm -hmm. You know, so something's growing and saying this is doable. It's not the ideal, but it's working. And so just scrape us, scrape, get it wet, scrape it, plant your seeds when they come up, put wood chips around it, and you're good. Even uh, concrete sidewalks have weeds growing. Yeah, in cracks. So. You'll see. You'll see. <laughs> exactly. So cut the grass down as low as I possibly can. And leave the clippings there because the grass is the green material that will feed your soil. So don't take anything away. Then a layer of cardboard and newspaper. Ideally paper, that stuff at Home Depot, the brown paper. Because, see, the problem with cardboard, because it's so rigid, if you have dips, if you have airspace, the, the weeds will stay alive. So the paper gets wet, lays tight to the ground, and it suffocates all the weeds. So you're using that cardboard and newspaper and, and paper and stuff like that to kill, kill the off grass. the weeds the grass. underneath and the grass that's underneath it. But you don't want it to have to work so hard to do it, so you cut it down as low as you possibly can. Yeah, because it, because again, you see airspace, you want to reduce airspace. Because when plants don't have air and light, they die. And so you want to, you want to, and so when you put the paper down, it'll lay tight to the ground and basically suffocate it when you put the wood chips over it. 
and then you add, I've heard you, it kind of averages about four inches. Of In a chips. garden space, because you've got to access the soil to plant your seeds there. More than four inches, it's going to be a lot of work to move. And so, you know, four inches is probably max in a garden space. What if I have an area, like, I have two and a half acres right now in my property. And I use about half an acre of it. And the rest of it is sand. And right now, part of that is covered in about three or four feet of wood chips. What if I have an area that I'm not using right now, I'm not going to need to use for a while, but later on in life, I want that to be a beautiful area to grow food in, kind of like your parking lot. How deep can I drop the wood chips in an area like that that I'm not planning on using for, say, five years? Well, I answer your question with a question. How much money do you want in the bank? <laughs> the more you put down, the more it's going to build the soil. <laughs> So we put the cut the grass down, cardboard newspaper, um, and four-ish inches of wood chips. And then you, you ideally do that in the fall. Ideally. And that way winter and spring. spring. All that paper is and, and plants are dead. And you could pull back and plant your, plant your seeds and you grow a garden. So you pull back uh, the wood chips till you see the actual soil. And then you plant your seeds in the soil and then wait for them. As they come up, then you move the wood chips to cover the ground around the plants. And you're fine. But not covering the plants, no, just kind of just up cover to the, the ground. bottom leaf. See, the advantage of anything laying on the ground that's composting, every time it rains or you water, it gets compost to you that's feeding the soil. So your soil is always being upgraded, always being fed. Where when you, when you have bare ground, Nothing's feeding the soil, and you have plants taking out, so you have a negative. Okay, so I have heard you say from time to time, if you are going to till one last time, even though you don't recommend it, it's okay-ish to do one till if you just can't stop yourself from doing it. You can't stop yourself to do it, but here's the, here's the reality. Food growing in tilled soil has 60% nutrients from those growing in untilled soil. That's more than half. It's a big deal. And see, the, the, the problem with tilling is that in, in the soil you have all kinds of living organisms. And you till, you kill them all. So basically, when you till, you sterilize the soil. And even if it's hard pan right on top, there might still be uh, mycelium and worms and all yeah. kinds of stuff underneath. And when you till that up, you're taking you that you hard, it. nasty stuff from on top, putting it underneath and taking the good stuff, putting it on top, just to become hard, nasty again. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's say I do the cut the grass, cardboard newspaper, and four inches of wood chips, but I need to grow food right now because the world's ending. Okay. What do I do? How do I make it better right now? You have to do it right now. Sand. You get the weeds out before you cover. You, you get the weeds out, then plant in that soil, then cover it with wood chips. Can I add? Um, I've heard you say when I first started uh, coming out here, fish emulsion or uh, blood meal. That, that's a good. If you have dead soil, nothing alive, that will feed it. That will bring life into the soil. You know, it's a fertilizer, and it's a safe fertilizer. What about um, any other kind of fertilizers? Well, manu animal manures, if you know what they ate. The problem nowadays is that animals are fed grass that was sprayed with 2,4-D Agent Orange, which is a broadleaf herbicide, which will kill all your plants. Or they're fed growth hormones or antibiotics, which is not helpful. So you have to be careful to know where the manure came from. So if I am going to put down any kind of compost or manure or any kind of fertilizer at all where in the layers do i put that i think it's on, on top, top of the cardboard everything you always put everything on top you never mix and you never bury you never till if you look at nature the creator who is all powerful never disturbs the ground everything is totally covered nothing is disturbed nothing's ever mixed the ground is never broken up and we don't get it we keep thinking that that's the best thing to do but it's not if I am starting right now today and I have all the components and first thing I do is I pull out the mower, 
and okay i mean i don't put wood chips down and then put cardboard and these paper on top of it and then where in that level it, would it be above like the newspaper but below the wood chips because you don't want the compost to be on top you want to you want to put the, the, first, the paper first try closest to the near, near the ground where we have grass because the paper's purpose is to kill by suffocation and you want the you, you want the grass to die which will create a fertilizer that's going to feed the ground but if i was going to put compost that would be the next the compost is next and then, and then be the wood, chip. wood chips okay you know, um, there's been, I'm sorry, go ahead. Were you finished? No. Um, you're not finished? No, go ahead. <laughs> it's all you. This is your house. Well, no. <laughs> and you never get to speak. I have spoke oh, to okay. these people a lot. They no, heard no, no. my voice. But anyway, if you live in the city and you have garden and pots, you know, of course there's hope. You don't need to have a huge garden, but, you know, even if you have a garden that can grow, even if you have some pots that can grow, um, you know, some lettuce that you can just trim the leaves off. And have a hanging um, pot that can grow you know cherry tomatoes on you can have a place with some kale I mean if you have a balcony I'll never forget when I was in China the, people, the way the people would have their gardens in their balconies and their gardens on the on the skyscrapers way at the top the swimming pools it's very interesting but um, anyway there's where there's a will there's a way there's hope and then I noticed somebody the one person in Croatia they said it's really expensive to get wood chips there, so they're kind of wondering if there's an alternative. I think any organic material. Yeah, any, any living material, you know, that's, again, I love the Bible, from dust we came, from dust we came, never in God created to the back of earth. And so any organic material will turn back to dirt. That, that question, I want to say this because it's really powerful. For those that can't get wood chips, for whatever reason, if you pray, you're going to be amazed at how that changes. I've had so many testimonies of people say, I live in a rural area. We have no tree service. I can't get it. He says, you ever pray? He says, no. Well, when you do and something changes, call me. You wouldn't believe the testimonies I've heard, the amazing things God's done to bring people wood chips when they pray. It's awesome. And the word says very plainly we have not because we don't ask. Okay, so this person planted a plant from seeds and they got about two feet high. They got blossoms but have no fruit. Any ideas? Pollination could be a reason. Yeah. You know, bees are essential. Also, um, like my apple trees uh, for four years. I would get blossoms and it would get like a frost or something like that and I just never get any apples and this year we didn't get that I mean it snowed but it didn't get frost and uh, it didn't last that long and we have so many apples on all of our trees all of our fruit everything is just Great. boom this year and I'm so stoked that we didn't get that last late frost that always kills off all of our blossoms but what I found interesting about frost is I have a peach tree in Swim, a, a, an apricot tree in Swim, which is you shouldn't be trying to grow here because it's too too cold. And every spring, we get a frost that says, oh, we're not going to need any apricots, but I, have, I get apricots. <laughs> and what I'm sensing is when the plant's healthy, the frost doesn't, isn't a problem. It's all, it keeps always coming back to health. It just amazes me how important health is. But we have, we have, we have unhealthy plants sometimes here. We've just got to, you know, amend the soil, you know, mm -hmm. or whatever it takes to do it. Paul, how do you store most of your fruit and produce? I have a walk-in cooler that I can store the fruit in, and then the produce, you know, like if I, the, the winter squash stuff is sitting on the porch, you know, to get away from anything from freezing. And they store pretty well but otherwise i don't really store a lot of food i will keep it fresh and because we have a mild climate i have fresh greens all winter so there's really no reason to have to do a lot of storing we usually eat fresh in season yeah which is ideal you know and again the reality is when fruits and vegetables are picked in 10 minutes they can lose up to 80 percent of metal properties in 10 minutes not 10 hours it's a big deal to eat food fresh Okay, it says, what happened to adding compost before the chips? Has the recommendation changed? No. 
Well, the, here's the thing is it's always been the basics. You have ground, you had enough wood chips. I'm having a hard time hearing. Sorry. I don't know why they keep saying it's. Really it's because low. we're talking this way mm. and we're not projecting to the oh. phone, which is doing the recording. That's for that microphone, the one you're wearing, or for these other cameras. Oh. That I'm going to put all this together later on. We almost closer? didn't do a live because of that. Can you move um, it a little bit closer? Maybe the framing might be off. Hey guys, we're gonna jiggle around the camera here for a second, see if we can get you closer. Yeah, to just bring it really close. Um, or how about let's maybe do even this. over here? No, let's people this. are saying they can't hear, they want to listen. Mm -hmm. Let's put Someone it on the table. Someone also mentioned um, mumbling. Okay. Okay, we're going mobile. Let's move some of this. Yeah, let's put you. Okay, that is about as close as I'm willing to put you guys. Thank you. Can you guys hear better? Say something. Well, uh, you're the, you're the Hello, one. say something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's still catching up, so we'll find out in a second. Okay. Oh, yep, yeah, I just saw this move. Okay. Paul, I have tons of lamb quarters. Is there some way to preserve it? I don't know. Um, I I'm not sure if you can I know. freeze it or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, That's right? a good point. Maybe blanch it and put it in the freezer, I guess. I don't know. I can't imagine. Unless you uh, freeze dry it or um, I don't know if there's a way. Well, Maybe I would blanch it and stick it in the freezer and see what happens. What's I mean, the season for lamb quarters? Like always? Right now. It's spring. Just right spring? Now. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't happen later. It doesn't yeah. Not in the fall either? No. Uh, I don't think so. Uh-uh. No. My sense is eat things in the season. When it's when I'm out there weeding, I'm just eating, you know, because it's just it's weeding there. and eating. You know, because it's just what he does all day. Hmm? Okay, well, people don't care about hearing about me. God used Paul to open my eyes. I I'm gonna say thought I was going to learn about gardening, and had the awakening of my life. Paul is. Uh, Margaret? Oh, Paul, it's Marigreth from MA in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't joking about the Bible study over the phone. Uh, oh my goodness, I'm honored to see you all, or y'all. Uh, <laughs> y'all, that Thanks must for be sharing <laughs> your time and knowledge with us. Y'all, must be from the sale. Well, and that's um, like at work. I always say, how y'all doing, or, and mm -hmm. I'm not from the South, well, not anymore, well, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, I just do it, and I know that some people are, no, I said y'all, not you all. <laughs> <laughs> they want you to know. Uh, let's see, so grateful to have gotten back to Eden. Uh, so grateful for you, stumbled upon back to Eden by accident. In quotes. No, he's never sprayed that. And it gave me the courage to start my very first garden in the Tacoma area right now in my backyard. I went out, or I went all out and have planted tons. Thanks. Well, if you're in the Tacoma area, stop by and say hi to Paul. Hi, Paul. Wondering if you're leaning pro or post tribulation rapture, what do you think? of Matthew 24 for this. I already, I already answered it in the okay. text, but I just told him that all we're hearing is occupy and that we're, you know, if, 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 if he comes and takes us, that's magnificent, but we also want people to be saved. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's literally occupy the same. Occupy till, till I come. Yeah. <laughs> and we're not hearing that. We're hearing prepare, prepare because the, the days are evil. How do you manage slugs? They seem to be the only thing eating up my garden. I manage slugs by having healthy plants. It's dramatic, the difference, when you have healthy plants. Is straw as good as wood chips for mulch? Does it, ha um, does it, does it also make compost tea when watered? It does make compost tea. The, the challenge with straw is that it breaks down quickly and when it gets wet, it's really slimy, you know, it's not really 
comes from the arm, so it, you know. But it, any organic material will work. You know, the problem with straw is that many times it has seeds in it, and you're going to get a lot of whatever that the seed was growing in your garden. Noah knew what clean and unclean animals were when he prepared the ark. Except, well, we have pigs, right? No, yeah, and, and if you remember, though, unclean. the unclean animals came by sevens. The other ones came by two. Really? Oh, yeah. Read the, read the text. I don't remember that. Yeah, there was there was a large, much larger number of clean animals than the, the regular ones. There was seven. Right, the unclean. Yeah. Wow. Well. Because God knew that afterwards that was going to be their food. You know, so it was really essential to, to provide for them. Oh, huh? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to have to move this one. <laughs> we put a, another camera in the way, and now. I kind of wondered about that. Spoke it up. And how come this isn't showing up as being closer, is it? Yeah, it, it got a lot closer. Oh, mine's not showing up. Um, yeah, probably a bit behind. No, not that far behind. Your, your hand, I think. Yeah, we're like 15 minutes behind. Okay. How many? 15 minutes. The cat's not. Oh, okay. But the video wasn't. Oh, wow. Amazing. Okay. She's handy like you, Mr. Nub. Right? That's why I keep her around. She's okay. <laughs> She's a blessing. Ah, you don't know her. <laughs> she did get straight A's. I did. Like, All right, good for you. Since kindergarten. And she's going to what? I'm doing college work next year. So she just finished her sophomore year in high school, and she's doing running start. So she'll be starting college. Yeah, it's great for her junior year. My kids do that. Yeah, she must have got it from her mom. Her looks, though, that's for me. <laughs> I didn't think she looked like you. I believe it. I'm gonna edit you out of this thing. Uh, we sift leave or leave. And were chips and cast with hen yard. Okay, let's try this again. We sift, leaf, leave. I think that's what's messing me up. Leaves and wood chips. So they sift them and cast with hen yard compost. So basically, what you're doing, you take all the compost out of your chicken coop because everything goes to your chickens, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And then they eat off of that. They process it. They, you know, they like little feet chop everything up and they eat, eat it and then really turn it back to dirt. And then when you need more, I think I have a video of it um, where you just take something, uh, uh, was it one inch, half inch? It's, it, it's a quarter inch screen. It's called quarter inch. hardware cloth. It's a quarter inch screen and it comes in 30 inch width. So I have a 30, 30 inch long. So I put it in a wooden frame, put that wood on, fill the stuff on it, and screen everything. And it takes it's really a beautiful compost out of, my, out of my chicken coop. And you just take that out to the garden, garden and you spread it on top and, more on top. and plant it right in. See, that's why I'm good at chickens. Yeah, it makes great soil. And then the beauty is, is nothing in your yard goes to waste. Everything is recycled, turned back to dirt. It's such a great, you know, finishing, you know, end result of, you know, um, recycle. And if you don't eat something, it doesn't go to waste. The chickens will eat it, you know, so it's just, they're really great. And you don't have potatoes growing in your garden or in your grass. Actually, you do have potatoes on the outside of your uh, chicken run, I think. Like yes, on the back, back where the they kicked them out, uh -huh. and then they just they kicked them out and started growing. That's awesome. <laughs> um, I'm proud of my potatoes. Tree. I did nothing. <laughs> potatoes are so fun to grow; they're easy, you know. Uh, this method would work on trees that are being destroyed by insects such as pine bark beetles and emerald ash borer. So wood, adding wood chips, help Again, trees it's, it's that health. are being it's, you know, If you look at nature, insects are taking out stress dehydrated plants. They're never attacking healthy plants. It's you, you know, Usually when you see forests get taken out, it's usually after a drought. 
the, and the trees are really dehydrated. That's when the insects come in. Because you see, in healthy plants that are full of water, insects don't go there because they don't want water. They want cellulose and fiber. And so it's all about, and keep coming back to its health. It's not the, the insects, not the issue, it's health. If you get health happening, insects don't bother you. Can you control the height of a nine dwarf fruit tree by pruning the main leaving trunk or is it only dwarf varieties? You can control the height of anything but cherry trees. Oh man. <laughs> you know, by pruning. <laughs> the cherry trees get huge. There's no, no way to matter. keep those small, you know. <laughs> no matter. Now I have somewhere, I have an apple tree that kind of died, but it's growing from the rootstock underneath. So it's not an apple tree. It's, it's not what, apple? It's whatever the apple, whatever the rootstock was. But it's not that type of apple. It's it may not even be apple. It may not even be apple. apple it may, may not even be apple. It may be something else. Really? Because rootstocks are varied. They're not always the same. What else could it be? And like, I'm just going to let it grow because I think it's apple and later on. Well, just, I'm you'll you'll, find, out what it is. you'll find out what it is when it fruits. Yeah. Huh. So yeah, that, that the leads me back to something you said before because when you're grafting, uh, like say... Uh, Granny Smith onto a delicious, red delicious or something. That has to be apple to apple. Mm -hmm. How are they getting away with the rootstock grafting an apple tree onto the rootstock and it taking if it's not it's, apple it's, to whatever apple? Whatever it is, it's, it's compatible. Wow. You know, it's obviously compatible. That's the first time I've heard that. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping it's apple because I'm going to graft other apples onto it just well, so yeah, well, well whatever if, it, if, if it's apple and, and the graft takes then what whatever comes off your graft will be what you, you but it'll still be dwarf because it's coming from the root stock, root stock, no matter yeah. what it is yeah. i'm keeping it uh, let's see every once and again the chat decides to jump on me and i have to go try to catch up I think it's telling me that uh, I'm getting a little too slow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Yes, I'm going to cut it. Sorry, sorry. Make sure I can straight. Okay, we're getting close. Uh, eggplant, I know that one. Uh, Pruning the fruit tree is my main thing I wanted to ask Paul how to do. But you, you should come over and watch what he does. It's not something you could just say on the on here, is there? Yeah. Yeah, pruning is an art form. And it's all about uh, all about arranging, everything having its place. And the only culture in the world who knows how to do it right are the Japanese. Everybody else butchers trees. And here's the reason. Everybody prunes from the outside in except the Japanese. They prune from the inside out. And it makes such a difference when you get inside the tree, you get rid of all the crossovers, everything comes, and you open it up. And the, and the art of pruning, according to the Japanese, when you're finished, it should look like you didn't do anything. You should finish with the natural and it look like the tree just grew that way. You, sh you should see that. I just wish you guys could see the trees that Paul's pruned through the years. They don't even look like they've been pruned. If you, I mean, if you hadn't seen them before, obviously they do, but... They're beautiful. He does an incredible job, and he's taught a lot of people to do it. Have you ever thought about doing rabbits? I did rabbits I once. We couldn't. We couldn't use them all. They, they grew so heavily, man. You can't <laughs> keep up. You know? Plus, they're unclean. We were. We were. We're supposed to do them for our um, animals, but um, yeah, we were going to feed them to our animals. Dog. Have you ever um, made like an actual compost tea to like fool your feet or to spray onto anything? Like instead of just using like the wood chips and the compost and stuff? No, you know, again, again having, having watched it now for 43 years and looking at nature, all these extra things we do is just labor, and I'm sure they work, but they're labor intensive. And from my perspective, really, when you lay compost on the ground, when water goes through it, it creates compost tea. It happens anyway. So why do you have to, you know, do, go do it outside the um, environment and make it make it harder on yourself? The widow and her son had flour and oil to offer Elijah. You don't have to be a gardener to have something in store 
to offer to those that the Lord sends your way, but don't be empty-handed. So have something that you're stocking up. I hope everyone can give a little bit. We'll contribute to the fundraiser for Paul. Oh, yes. Um, so if you guys haven't seen that video, uh, I know there's different people on here now. Um, you you, you want to be, called? you want to come in the fall if you want, or in the winter, if you want to watch Paul or learn from Paul how to uh, prune. Because right now there's nothing that he's pruning. No. So for your pruning, usually I think it's in January or December, is it December? December, January. So usually you start usually at the beginning of December. Yeah. So if you want to come to see Paul Prune, contact Call him. You. And uh, usually he's out there almost every day in the wintertime pruning. No, we're not Seventh-day Adventists, but we are we keep the seventh day because it's... The fourth commandment. It's the fourth commandment, and it, we followed the Catholic Church. We didn't follow the Bible. If we start really looking at, to see what the Bible says and not what other people have told us that it says, then you start seeing things really differently. And that's one of the things that we've purposed to do in the last several years. Because we haven't really gone to church. That wasn't always because I remember it was Sunday and then you got a letter or talked to somebody on the phone or something like that. And they pointed out that it was... Remember you telling me the story? Well, it was... It was um, I go to Israel a lot, and when I get, went to Israel, I didn't really know any believers there, believers per se. Believe. Anyway, so I just, um, what I did was, um, osmosisly, I'd pick up just basically by being there what people did. And I, and they, you know, they treat the feasts as we treat Easter and Christmas and Valentine's and all the things that we do here that are not biblical. And so, um, I just began, to, I, I mostly went there in the fall, and so there's a lot of beautiful, intense feasts in the fall. And I know that Yeshua really fulfilled a lot of them already. And I was paying attention, and just osmosisly, I started picking up. And um, I I realized, I was, I'd been asking the Lord for about 20 years, when's the Sabbath? Because all these people say it's Saturday, I mean Sunday, and I don't think it's Sunday, and I, I before when I before I knew God, I knew that Sunday was the Sun God Day, and I went, wondered why people were following the Sun God Day over the Sabbath. And I know in the Bible it does talk about you know they met on Sunday, which is fine, um, and you can meet on Sunday or Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. But anyway, um, what's the holy day? And so I saw that it was Friday night to Saturday night because that was a day to God. And um, I would keep Shabbat with different religious Jews that were there, or people that knew Yeshua that kept Shabbat. Um, and I just started really asking, or saying, or it was affirmed to me that it was really something significant. I did a word study on Sabbath, and I began to realize from that itself, it was powerful, and how when we don't do it, we there's judgment. When we don't, God wants us to keep it. He wants us to keep his feasts, too. And the modern day church threw it all out and I wondered why. And then I began to see that there was a lot of anti-Semitism in the church. Augustine, Calvin, um, what's his name? Uh, Luther. Luther. They were anti-Semitic. And I had wondered if it had something to do with it. And then they pulled a lot of their traditions in with what they believed and gave it to the people. And I think that they found all these doctrines to justify it. Anyway, I started going to directly to the scripture. And I began to ask God, God, what is it? What is it? Something's not right. Something's not right. And like I said, with my background in the occult, witchcraft, and Satanism, I realized that that it was really significant. And it was something I felt really stirred up to do. And one time, I there was a, a religious Jew friend of mine. from She was from Columbia. And she, she shared this really amazing rabbi that was full-on Jewish rabbi. And his conviction and teaching about Sabbath, Shabbat. And I watched it and I was so moved by it because it was so true. It was so true that one day, and Paul was contesting it. He kept saying, he was telling me the party line that everybody says that doesn't adhere to the, to the Sabbath. And I just kept praying that God would help him to see because I was tired of being the leader of these kinds of things or, you know, telling him because I'm the visionary and he's the 
you know, the teacher. And so, um, so basically what happened is that, um, I saw this video of this rabbi and he gave such an incredibly convicting anointed word about Sabbath that Paul was walking upstairs to go to bed, I think, or something. And I was sitting in front of my computer, um, my desktop computer. And I said, honey, can you watch this? It's only like four minutes or something. It was really short, maybe it was seven minutes anyway. And he goes, sure. And so I was sitting in front of my computer and he was standing behind me. And the guy, I really believe that God really anointed this man to express the true meaning of Sabbath. And I can't find the video anywhere now. I, he did another one and it's changed and it was so disappointing. But anyway, all this to say is that I turned around when it was over and Paul was crying. And he looked at me and he says, you're right. You're right. <laughs> the Holy Spirit really talked to him, spoke to him deeply in his heart. And he said, you're right. And it was not me that was right. It was God that was right. And I believe this is long before everybody else. You hear all these people doing, you know. And I don't, I'm not really, um, like, you know, people say, are you Messianic Jew? Not really. You know, I think I'm following the scripture. And too many times Messianics go into the law. And I, I really feel like it's really important to to follow the scripture, follow the whole, the Bible says that you need that no man teach you. If you know Yeshua is in your heart and you know him, then it's the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, that actually it says the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us into all truth. And if you really are sincere and you really are dedicating yourself to God and putting it to death your flesh on a daily, God really does. He wants to speak to you and he does anyway, even if you don't. But but he, he really does. He wants to show you righteous ways in which to live. And he wants to, to make himself real. And the more we obey him, the more he manifests and the more he manifest his power through us even if we're not special just if we if we're just willing it's not you don't have to be special you just have to be willing and you don't have to be perfect and god is we're all in process and we have to realize that god is really i'm sorry he's out for our hearts he wants relationship with us he does not want religion so if you're following a religious thing it's, you're missing the mark. What he wants is relationship. If you if you go to the word, is if it's your bread, if it's your life, and if it is your relationship with him is everything. You put that before gardening. You put that before, you know, fruit tree pruning or, <laughs> or, you know, how good your strawberries are. You just put him first. He really wants to manifest who he is to you. He really wants to show him, show you how much he loves you. And he wants to show you how to live now so that we can be ready for the future. Because the future right now is, it's going to matter who your neighbors are. It's going to matter who you live with. It's going to matter um, who who's in your environment. And if there are people of God, it's going to be a place of safety. And it doesn't have to be perfect people of God. There's nobody out there that's perfect. I don't care if you're a pastor, if you're whatever, you know, you're not perfect. It's only by the bloody Yeshua that makes you any kind of righteousness before God. It's nothing to do with you. And so that's how we came to Shabbat. That's how we came to realizing that we're, we've been doing it wrong and we've got to be what's right before him. And it, that's the big thing. So anyway, sorry for getting emotional. No, you're good. Um, uh, yeah, I skipped down the chats here for a little bit just to see what people were saying. And, uh, See. Amen. No, I'm crying. Um, stay strong. Oh, Carol, preach it, my sister in Christ. Very powerful. Thank you for this. Bless you. Amen. We got a super chat. Yeah. And uh, John. It's a super yeah. chat. Um, if somebody just really wants to make their point be seen, uh, they can type out a message and do a donation in there. And it pops right up on the top of the screen. And you it's can click on that. Page the top comment in the chat so very top of the I screen, lost the chat see. I don't know what happened oh, <laughs> slide chat in the middle oh sorry so it just says stay strong and that's from John Schaefer and amen
love you, Carol. Jesus is merciful. Yes, we are under the blood. Amen. Okay. Let's see here. You know, yes. we just want we just want people to know God. And that's the main thing. I think that's the whole purpose right now is that people need to have hope. And if there's hope, then people will feel a lot more stable to be able to do whatever it is that God will show you to do. And and I think, don't you feel that way too, honey? I mean, it's like, it's just all about knowing God, and that's what's where the freedom is. And you just, and it's like humility and in righteousness walk this thing out, you know. And he'll he'll just be there for you. He's so present. He's an ever present help in time of need. Every time. Every time of need. Um, here's one on that. Now that you keep the Sabbath, how has it changed your life? I look Anything forward to it every Saturday. We look forward to it. Um, you just spend the time in the Word, fellowship, prayer, focus, focus on on. And then sometimes he'll he'll lead me. Like I know that the religious people won't necessarily approve of this but sometimes he'll lead me to go do like minister to someone like go do a crazy uh what is it um baby shower i mean i have so many baby showers when i when you're midwife you get invited to a lot of things you know i'll maybe go do a baby shower and just dedicate that time to the lord you know um just to love someone you know maybe he'll tell you to go visit someone because you don't take the time because you're so busy during the week i think it makes for a healthy um, person and and on Friday nights lots of times you know when you start Shabbat you bless your children I think one of the main things that that um, the Jews are so prosperous in many ways I mean I know that there's imperfect Jews like there's imperfect anybody but you know the Jew, one of the reasons I think that Jews are so prosperous is because for centuries they were told by God to bless their children and they did it and it's like they'd say may you be like Manasseh may you be like Rachel and Rebecca, and, you know, I mean, all these really amazing, beautiful words that they'd speak over their children. And then dedicate that entire day to, to spending quality time focused on the Lord and resting. I don't think we were ever meant to be as crazy busy as we are. It's, wonder, it's no wonder that heart disease is one of the biggest killers in our culture. You know, it's because we're, we're not resting. We don't do what God says to do. And if you really want to hear his voice, if you really want to be in relationship with him, if you really do, you want to be obedient to him. And you've got strongholds that keep you inhibited from hearing him and listening to him and obeying him. And it's like you've got to let those go. You've got to figure out ways in which to resolve those areas in your life because a little leaven leavens the whole lump. And if you've got little areas in your life that can manifest into something greater you'll believe things that are not true you'll hear things that are not true you have tormentors that are coming to you telling you lies about yourself about people about things i mean it's so crazy and god's given us provision he's made provision for us to be relieved from all that and and the only reason i know is because i've lived 70 years and i and i and i've known god since i was 19 years old and little by little, he's shown me truth. And it's in his word. It's all in his word. It's so practical. And it's so real. I don't mean to preach. I'm sorry. I just... Okay. This is why we're here. Uh, it says, The mountains of trees and streams are my new church. But God's work is there. And there it is where I can know him better. Every bit of life is in his hands and I see how it works but be in the word I mean you I I agree when I'm out in the wilderness man I get so I just want to worship God I mean it's just all about and it's and it's set it you want to be careful because Corinthians warns us about worshiping the creation over the creator and you want to really be focused on who it is not what he created so that's really a big cautionary thing is that I know because I know people that are, what, what are the people that worship? I guess mostly witchcraft, the witches. I mean, I used to worship the, the earth, you know, and it's like, it's not, it's not our, it's not mother earth. It's not, 
the creation. It's the creator himself. And I think that's the big caution when you when you start saying that that's your church, which I think it is. I mean, it's where I can really focus on God. But you want to be careful and make sure that you are focusing on the creator and not his creation. And I'm not implying you saying that. I just wanted to, to caution others. Also, isn't there a um, uh, stand at the door and knock? Basically, God is. I, stand, I stand at the door and knock. Said, Behold, and I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him. And he with me. He's talking to believers there. He was talking to the church. The church, yes. He's yeah, sitting there it's, outside, it's, knocking on the door saying, yes. let me in. Well, you guys it's my gone. church, yeah. Yes. And I, I'm not welcome. And it's so, so sad. It, out in nature can be where, but you also have uh, where two or more gathered. Exactly. Right so, now, we're having church. This is church. Can you, out in the cabin, out in the mountains, never leaving your mountain, still have a relationship with God, still have a uh, communion, a church, can you by yourself? Never forsake the assembling of yes. yourself. Um, it's like, it says where two or three are gathered together in my presence. I'm there. Or I'll be in the midst of it. You know, kind of thing. It's, so the scripture talks clearly about not being individual, being in a, you know, in a group, two or three even, the small, mm -hmm. you know, but there's something about the body, a connection. You see, each joint supplies a body is not just a hand or a foot. It's the whole thing. And so God wants the wholeness. Um, let's see here. Okay, we're going to have to skip back up to wherever we left <laughs> off because we got way off. But it was awesome. Um, this I thought was kind Somebody's of... saying, am I going to hell? You know what, sweetheart? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? We choose to go to hell. There's so much provision for us. If you're not choosing to go to hell, seek after God. You know, he he looks at a sincere heart. You know, God's merciful. God, you know, it's I'm not going to judge. I don't know who's going to hell, who's going to heaven. It's I just know that what he's shown me through his word and having a relationship with him. Well, here's the word. It says, God's not willing that any perish but all come to repentance. Amen. And I think that the thief on the cross gives such a demonstration is there's nothing you can do to inherit eternal life. That man could do nothing. Amen. He's dying. Amen. And he says, Preach. I repent. I come to you. And you'll be with me today in paradise. He couldn't get baptized. Amen. He couldn't do anything. He just repented. God is such a merciful God. And he totally God. took him to heaven. Today you will be with me in paradise. Except he didn't get very many rewards. And I think that that, you know, you never know. God is, who knows what God, how mysterious God is. But he's, he looks at the heart. And uh, we can't make, you know, you can't just pull out pages of the Bible and say, I'm going to believe this, but I'm not going to believe this either. You know, you just really want to, it's the whole counsel of God. And, uh, you know, if, if God's big enough to keep his word all these millions, millions, millions of days, but uh, thousands of years, then, you know, he's, he's big enough to take care of you if your heart's toward him. So, right now, two or more of us are gathered. Somebody's watching this. I mean, how gathered do you have to be? There's two of you sitting on the couch and some guy watching this in his apartment uh, out in the middle of wherever. Is a live stream how gathered how close do you have to be can it be over the phone can you be yeah. watching i have a i have people call me on the phone all the time tv yeah, having church all the time people call me on the phone and i always tell them we're having church because we're talking about god and his spirit's there and he's talking to us he's giving us revelation it's not a building it's just it's it's he shows up in you know lives in our heart with, with you know in god doesn't dwell in temples made with hands i love that in scripture god doesn't go to church the church is people, it's individuals. When we come together and we focus on God, he shows up and all it takes is two. <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, he's in church too. I mean, he's right. wherever, two or more gathered, but God doesn't go to church. But I know what you mean. Well, he doesn't go to church because you. It's in, in, in Revelation chapter three, it says the door is closed. He's not welcome in church. Ooh, yeah, that's right. Gosh, he's not welcome. I forgot welcome. about that. That's so true. 
So going back to um, how the Star Garden uh, <laughs> is really, um, it says on paper and cardboard, I or often I use leaves on planned gardens that I will run over with a mulching mower with a bagger and then soak it with water and they mat down well enough to kill off any of the uh, like uh, grass or weeds yeah. or anything that's whatever, like, whatever, whatever works need cardboard for it yeah whatever works use if something's effective go for it that's organic material they're not always going to make cardboard yeah I mean someday something's going to be to where you know, you know and, and if you have to, you can <laughs> physically pull the stuff out, you know, so it's just, you know, there's all kinds of options. And it's, and it's not even that ideal, you know, I mean, there's good things about it, but it's, you know, it's got chemicals in it and stuff. That's how they process it. So organic material is ideal, don't you think? Yeah. The um, needles, leaves, and twigs. It's hopefully not been sprayed much. Anything. Speaking of spraying, Paul, have you ever sprayed your trees with whey or mold? Yeah. I used to spray everything when I first came here because I didn't know any better. And I use I use lime sulfur because it was safe. You know, and I use an oil, uh, dormant oil for the bugs. But I've learned over time that that's allopathic medicine and it's not a solution. <laughs> it it does, it's it's not, it doesn't slu- it's just it's just temporary. And when I've come to realize that I walk out, I walk out there my leaves are totally clean, I have no mildew, I have no bugs, I mean they're gorgeous. Usually. Beca- because the ground's good. And so I've come through 43 years of experience to realize health is the answer. There's nothing nothing better than health. And when you're talking like health of the garden or the ground, this guy has three, or three peach trees, and they're about 10 feet apart, which Too close. you like them. Um, like, well, 15 you started mi- 15, but 15 now you minimum need on dwarf trees. You're saying like 20 now or 25. Yeah, because look at my, look at, they, right. they, they, they grow really around. walk through them. But leaving that aside, they're only 10 feet apart. Two of them uh, came back this year. Okay. Uh, only had like two leaves and then they dropped off and no more leaves. But one of them is fine and they're only like 10 feet apart. Can the soil be healthy in just a 10 foot section and I mean just 10 feet apart be completely different? I don't know all the details and what's happening there so I can't really answer that. But um, well like in your orchard versus your uh, driveway area before when that was just grass and stuff right there on that border of that orchard I've seen you take a pack of carrot seeds and just throw it on top of the ground and boom, a month later there was carrots there and it blew me away. And if you tried that just 10 feet over before when it was just grass and mud and stuff, that wouldn't have happened. So there can be conditions where in this section right here, conditions are at least good enough to have a tree be doing fine but 10 feet away, something might be off. Mm-hmm. Well, just, you know, the, like I said, that was just the area, had, had, the whole area had been supported with wood chips breaking down. So, that, so the ground was really, you know, quite fertile. Uh, one of my lamb quarters in the greenhouse got eight feet tall. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's hysterical. Yeah, nope. They're saying they're hearing us five by five now. This is back from when we moved the camera forward, so we're good. Um, maybe chips are off. Let's see. Uh, anyone living on Connecticut shoreline, let me know if you oh, If anybody out there is on the Connecticut shoreline, let just me know in the chat here and. They have wood chips. Uh, my husband owns a tree removal company, Ooh. and depending on where you live, he can likely deliver for free. Awesome. Ooh. All right. Uh, Paul, do you chop and drop, or do you think chop and drop is good if you can't get wood chips? Yeah. 
Any organic. Any organic material. It, it, you know, it's all about covering. The soil needs to be covered. Whatever material you can use as organic to do that is good. That's like uh, for my grass, I just mulch, mulching blades mm -hmm. and don't even put it in a bag and I just let it go yeah, keep and it grass. just compost back into the grass. And without effort at all, my grass is the greenest by anybody in the neighborhood and they try. Yeah. And <laughs> I just am too lazy to bag it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. I've always, one of my neighbors was yelling at me about, literally yelling at me about how we're never going to have a garden. We're never going to be able to feed ourselves. And I was like, dude, look at my grass. I don't even try with this. And look at yours. <laughs> just, you know, try less. <laughs> that's what I, that's what I, that's what drew me to this type of gardening so much was, oh, less work. You know, the way you plant potatoes, you, you harvest your potatoes and then you plant them the same day. I mean, in the hole, yeah, a hole dug. Yeah, the hole's twice. already dug and you just, <laughs> oh, that take this biggest one here and just stick that in the ground and cover that up and we're done. <sighs> Next. That's my kind of gardening. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't got time for all that. And I that. think it's about God. He, God made things easy for us. He says, come learn to me. My yoke is easy. My burden's light. It's really huge. Uh, my garden is much healthier after finding you, Paul. Bless you for all you share with us. What plants do you recommend to prepare young couple or couples for creating families? This might be like herbs and stuff, maybe? What plants do you recommend to prepare young couples for creating families? I don't know if that's a, a midwifery yeah. <laughs> question what, or if it's like... Can, I, can they what, rephrase that, please? Well, it was a while back, so I don't know. Oh. But let's, let's take it both ways. So is there, if I was going to uh, have a, a newborn or be come pregnant. Oh, well, not me, because I don't self-identify as, well, I just said self-identify as me. Um, <laughs> but let's say my wife was going to uh, be pregnant, or we found out she was pregnant. What kind of uh, uh, plants, vegetables, mineral, or not minerals, uh, herbs, should we be going for uh, and <sighs> consuming more of if we are getting ready to or just have had a baby? A baby. Okay. Well, I, I tell people, ideally, it's best to start five years before you decide to have a baby because it's your your cells reproduce and, re, you know, it depends on how healthy you are. But anyway, all that to say is that I have on my webpage, um, it's gentlebirths.net, plural, gentlebirths.net. If you click on the new clients tab, you'll see a lot of my recommendations. But when I take care of people, I look at them in a designer kind of way because everybody's an individual. But for the most part, protein's epic. Easily digestible protein's really important. If you're vegan, you have to eat at least three green smoothies a day with lots of hemp seed and chia and all kinds of good stuff in it for you, like um, uh, brewer's yeast or nutritional yeast on everything, like all your salads. Anyway, you have to really capitalize on at least 60 to 70 grams of protein a day and depends on who you are, sometimes more not less for sure if you're tiny 70 80 if you're not if you're average and sometimes more depending on how your body's showing up grams of protein and then lots and lots of greens four to six servings of vegetables a day um two pieces of fruit because fruit can, can have a tendency to have we've been hybridizing our food fruit so much like in the nutritional value in fruit today is not like it used to be unless you grow your own and you've got stupendous soil, you know, because you're only as good as your, you know, your food's only as good as your soil, basically, you know, and so, and, and, and it's only as good as what you can assimilate. So if you're having a hard time digesting things because you have autoimmune diseases or you're having, you know, um, lactose intolerance or like, um, you know, what is it? The, when you can't eat um, gluten, what's it called? Gluten intolerance. Celiac, Celiac yeah. Um, anyway, then you have to look at things a little bit differently there and do things a little differently. But for the most part, two pieces of fruit a day, four to six servings of um, vegetables, fresh green is best because it's, they're really nutrient dense. They're superfoods. I get people to really 
uh, concentrate on using superfoods. If you eat eggs, eggs are really good for you when you're pregnant. Um, there's seven grams of protein in each egg, and so you can get a lot of protein that way. I recommend um, whole milk, 100% whole milk, yogurt. Um, Greek is usually got the highest density of protein. Um, if you eat dairy. Um, okay, so, so in the corner of the half your, garden. Half your, half your body weight in ounces of water. So if you weigh 150 pounds, you want to drink 75 ounces a day. Anyway, that should be for all of us, actually. For in the corner of the herb garden near the chicken coop, there is what I remember being black called homage. the women's black herb. Yep. There's, there's several women's herbs out there, but the okay. black cohosh. What are some of those? Um, motherwort is really good for women. Raspberry leaf is huge. Um, the black cohosh out there, that's for like labor, not for pregnancy or women. Um, but there's an infusion that I have on my webpage that I'm kind of world famous for. They mess with it a lot, but um, it's nettle, uh, two parts nettle, two parts raspberry leaf, one part oat straw, and one part alfalfa. And if you'll go to my webpage, it'll give you the rationale for why those are so good for pregnancy. And a lot of women um, give it to their pubescent children, you know, young, young women or older women. It's really good for women. And uh, it'll get rid of a lot of your typical ailments of pregnancy. And it also helps with regards to the labor and delivery and keeps, prevents, often will prevent um, hemorrhage, which is the biggest killer of women in, in pregnancy and birth. Um, is bleeding, but worldwide. But anyway, um, that's really huge and it's nutrient dense and they're very, um, they're uh, kind of a therapeutic dose because it's an infusion, it's not a tea. There's a big difference between a tea and an infusion. Anyway, so, and, and so, and nettles are really super high, high nutritively dense food. Um, it's super high in protein, which is what you need anyway when you're pregnant. And it's, uh, nettle is just really fantastic uh, food. It's really good for your kidneys, really good for your liver, but really good for your kidneys. And your kidney and liver are really taxed when you're pregnant. We are made to do it. We're made to handle it, pregnancy amazingly. I think it's a big miracle that we're able to carry children in our womb and give birth to them with stupendous, uh, health, you know, if we're healthy human beings, you know, I think that most people um, could have their baby at home if they're healthy. If they're not, or they don't believe, it's more what goes on between your ears and what you believe than what goes on in your hips. So if you feel that you can um, have your baby um, healthfully and take really good care of yourself, take responsibility for yourself, then um, you should really consider home birth because home birth is a real sacred space and healthy and if you've got people there that know what they're doing uh, and can help you it's amazing it's really like i said giving to birth is a very holy thing it's not to be taken lightly and it's an incredible parallel to our walk in the spirit even the act of giving birth and even the pregnancy is phenomenal so anyway and the symbolism with the the three vessel cord and the posana and so many things are like it's it's screaming it's screaming the word of god it's screaming the way in which god speaks to us um and wants us to walk in him by faith it's powerful so there's there's a lot to um pregnancy a lot more than um than what we traditionally believe it's not just about getting a baby out safely there's a lot more to pregnancy and birth than, than what meets the eye. And that's one of the things I teach globally. And if it's the other way, I say strawberries. Because there's nothing like What's he talking about? all of us that when the strawberries come out and we all go out there, race <laughs> out to get strawberries, and we sit down there in the strawberry patch and just eat them. And that creates family. Just, <laughs> a, just a whole little... Family bond, getting together, sitting there, and just the talking about our sprinklers. day. No, those are my strawberries. No, that one's mine. No, that one's mine. Oh, there's a good one over there. 
there's nothing better to create family than just having a good time. I mean, the sprinklers like are hitting the strawberries, and we're trying to get them. It's very funny to watch. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm I'm dying dying out there, <laughs> run out, grab a strawberry, take off, go back. I take it. You love strawberries. But you Love know, the Pacific that. Northwest grows some of the most remarkable strawberries I've ever eaten in my life. And I'm from California, so we had those California strawberries in Mexico. And I'm telling you, I've never had a strawberry or a raspberry as good as I do in the Pacific Northwest. There's some things that we do well here, and that's those, the berries here are really phenomenal. And like if we buy them at the store, they just have no flavor. There's nothing to them. They're terrible. There's no compared. juice. There's just, they're no. dead. <laughs> yeah, the thing about it is the shelf life of these strawberries are zip. It's like maybe two days if you're lucky. You got to eat them pretty much on, you know. Right. Yeah, right, right, right when you're right there. Right off the plant. Right now, the here's plant. the thing, though. The best. The little pill bugs. And I think it's just because maybe too much water from the sprinklers. <laughs> maybe. Um, but they get, they, your, they get your strawberries. They're everywhere. Yeah. yeah. And especially in the strawberries, they have to. We have to wait until the strawberries stand up like a foot tall, and then they they're start not as having the to them. Mm -hmm. having the. They, they don't like climbing, but if they're on the ground there. We have those little pill bugs everywhere, so maybe less water for me. But I love my strawberries. Uh, let's see here. Happy Father's Day. God bless you. Yes, Happy Father's Christina Day. Laws. All you fathers. I've seen lawns destroyed by straw that was treated with herbicides. Straw, mm. stay away from straw unless yeah, you know what it was toxic. treated with herbicides or not. Mm. I'm so glad I caught this very rare live. Thank you, Paul and Carol. It's awesome. Mead oil, uh, mead oil is great for any insect that eats parts of the plant. Mead oil? Neem. 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 Probably neem. Oh, N E E M. Okay. Yeah. Neem. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, there it says. No, it says neem. Oh, sorry. Oh, there we go. Again. <laughs> neem. Okay. Now we're cooking. Uh, stay away from straw. Uh, I love the tank I saw, Paul. Oh, okay. Probably the video. Soapy water will kill uh, soft boiled or soft bodied insects. Are my little pill bugs soft bodied? No. <sighs> How to stop aphids from getting your plant? Oh, that's probably that soft body answer. Compost tea has polyurethane. Is that we already answered that myself? Paul, I'm home from Home Depot buying fencing. Rabbits eat all of it. Now I can watch. I'll oh, probably eat all of his garden. Do you throw weeds to your chickens? Do what? Do you throw weeds to your chickens? Oh, for sure, everything. And that's what the D says. This D person earlier I saw it that said they wanted to buy the house next to yours, but it sold. Was there a house for sale around here? Right well, there's one, one for sale now. It hasn't sold. Across right the, across, across the road from us. D, there you go. Right across the street. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah. A pretty creature. Okay, well, we already did that. Um, I did do, there was a couple videos that I did um, during the pruning tours, uh, but one of them was like how to prune a tree. And I stopped Paul on one branch and I was like, just walk me literally step by step through how to prune this branch. And that, I've been told, helped a lot of people because you were explaining why you chose this branch. You know, out of three of them, you chose the center one to open it up. You know, this one was going up. This one was going down. This one was going <laughs> sideways in a direction that I didn't want. This one was going sideways in a direction I did want. This one cast a shadow over here. And you explained a lot of that. And if I could find the, that video, I will link it on the bottom along with earlier Carol's um, website. I'll put that in the links too. Uh, but that was a good video. If you can't make it out here to watch the printing live, then watch that video. Can I cut down fresh hickory for, for post to keep out the chickens? A few weeks later, leaves started growing around them again. I love it. <laughs> 
Oh, I cut down. I thought I was asking a question. Is that an invite? I want to come up from Gig Harbor. Hope Carol's home too. Yeah, you guys just give Paul a call on the phone number that's listed in the description and uh, see if there's he's available to uh, talk to you on the porch. Uh, seventh day while I'm back to Gig Harbor. Huh? Uh, feel so blessed to utilize back to Eden gardening and wood chips. I have so many worms and every year my soil gets darker and darker. You are heaven sent Paul. Tell us the story of putting the dead crow on the pole to deter other birds from eating your fruit. I think it was chickens, wasn't it? No, they were, they were crows. No, but the, you were stopping the crows from... Oh, no, they were eating my tree, fruit. eating the fruit. Yeah, Bill's right. And that was, you know, I'm, I'm coming out there at five o'clock every morning. These crows are just coming in like flocks and just totally destroying my, my fruit. And the bummer is, is they would eat the whole apple, they bite the one and go to another one, so they just damage everything. So I'm asking God, well, how do I deal with this? Because I go for my, my rifle, and there's one over here saying he's getting his rifle, leave. And so they're, I mean, they're totally they're smart birds, you know. And so he, I got the sense is just hang a dead one up. And so there was one down by my pond. I took a shot and I thought I missed it, but I come back there and the things in my pond. Oh, all right, I got one. So I, I, I put this piece of PVC pipe, hung it up there. And I came out with the next morning at five o'clock to watch what happened. It was so hilarious. They're coming in. Wah, wah, wah. And all of a sudden, their whole tone of voice changed. You start seeing them circling high and they never landed. It was awesome. It was totally effective. And, and I, did it, I did it for two years. And after that, I've never done it since. They just kind of get the idea. Don't go there. It's not a safe place. They don't come anymore. So I've, it was really a great solution. And you haven't had that pull up for a long time. No, like it's been years. Uh, yeah, a few years. At it's least. been years. You know, I only had it up for two years. And after that, it never came. I thought, wow, this is great. Because, you know, a crow doesn't last forever. You have to keep killing him, you know. So um, it was really great to be able to be done with that. It says, hey, Paul, I have a gift for you coming in the mail soon. Just getting the final pieces together. One of it to be special. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, the weather here is wet and relatively cool. Definitely. They're asking what's going on with the weather. Yeah, it's been a... It's, it's been being a, manipulated. It's been a very, very, very cool, wet spring. I'm very unusual. It's not, not normal. <laughs> but in eastern Washington, I'm loving it. Yeah, because you're hot there. And you yeah, don't get, yeah, it hasn't don't get been rain. so hot, and we rarely get rain, and it's been raining almost every day for a while. Uh, yeah, rain is the best. You know why rain is the best water in the world for, for plants? Purified? No. What God told me was really huge. <coughs> the finest of Earth's topsoil is in the air. Dust. And when it rains, it brings it back. So it's not the good stuff either. It's, it's, we're talking like the minerals. I mean, they're really good stuff is in the air. And when it rains, it brings that back in the water. Yeah, and then we got to pray against the Fukushima that's in the air, too. Mm. Not to be negative. <coughs> I'm just speaking about in, yeah, in a healthy, stuff. healthy natural the environment. Stuff. Yeah, this shirt is from James Prigioni or however you say his name, John. Yeah, I really like that guy. He's cool. It's a nice guy. We tried growing rice and was it wheat and barley or something? Um, the I rice mean, grew, there's somebody in town that does all that, that. But we the rice grew, but it didn't didn't didn't, didn't mature. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't long enough season, but it totally grew. And what was awesome was growing my wood chips. And I didn't water because <laughs> usually they grow white rice in standing water, and it just was phenomenal how well it did in the wood chips. He said, can you talk more about being led by the Spirit? I have no clue what I'm doing. That's maybe something we should do if we do this channel. You know, walk in the Spirit so you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. I think it's knowing the Word, you know, being in the Word and knowing the Word. And, and God will lead, guide, and direct well, you. Just, until... just, just a simple answer is that, you know, okay. David asked, asked the question, Psalm 119, he says, oh, yeah. how can a young man cleanse his way? Okay. And he answers it taking by heat. Take heed, paying attention to the Word. And then he gives his testimony. Thy word have I hid my heart that I might not sin against thee. It's huge. It's right there. It's how you walk in the Spirit. And, and how you walk in the Spirit is you memorize the word 
And when the, and when a need comes up, the Holy Spirit brings that to mind to lead you, to guide yeah. you into the into the right way. And just ask the Lord to help you. If you're not good at memorizing, ask the Lord to help you and start posting scripture all over the place. Like I remember um, our our pastor, he used to have a really hard time with cigarettes. And when he got saved, he used to, you know, remember those days where they used to have pockets on the, in the t-shirts? He'd put his cigarettes in there. And every time um, he'd go to grab a cigarette, he'd put his New Testament in there instead. And so he'd grab his Bible and he'd start reading it. And so I, I remember when I first started trying to memorize scripture i'd take file cards and i put them in my purse in my back pocket and every time i'd have a moment i'd sit down and i'd start saying it over and over and over again trying to memorize the scripture you know and pretty soon god hears your prayer and he starts really helping you to memorize the scripture and thy word have i hid in my heart that i might not sin against thee one of the biggest distractions that we have is the internet you know and i'm a culprit you know i'm 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 subject to it myself, you know, and I just feel like unless we're in the word, unless we're having our minds cleansed and renewed on a continual um, or at least every day washed by the word of God, that we're not likely to be walking in the spirit. You know, if we're just going through Instagram or Facebook or, you know, doing all that that doesn't pertain as much to the word of God, it's not going to renew your mind. You're going to be stuck. And you're going to be insulted by things that are not to be insulted by. You know, it's you'll be easily offended and you take it personal and everything. So you want to really be careful that you do spend time with God in prayer and in the word. And that's how you walk in the spirit. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That's such, that's so good. Honey. It's a perfect answer. And I think we're going to call it with that because we've hit past two hours and wow. it's, you know, vacation time. And I'm going to go have dinner with the family. <laughs> <laughs> with the daughter, so, right? Thank you all for uh, watching. Uh, what do we got? We have the, um, uh, what is it called? The campaign for the uh, chair. Yeah. Uh, tell us about that again real quick. Well, we're trying to get the money to be able to get a chair, but there's been some other things that have come up just recently. And also to pay for the bathtub and the bathroom to be fixed um, in our home to make it easier for Paul. And so, um, anyway, we really appreciate everyone that's contributed to that. And we really appreciate the woman that put it together. She's Audrey. She's a sweet, sweet woman that got the vision for it. And I just said, let's do it, you know, because it's a hard thing to ask for money. But um, if anybody has benefited all, all, all from Paul and they feel uh, led to contribute somehow, it would be really great to be able to get some of this stuff done and um, not have to sweat it, you know, worry about where it's going to come from. Because I know God's our provider, but I appreciate you guys that have contributed. Um, <clears throat> and... And then what else did you want to talk about? Um, and so I'm going to put a link in the description below. But if you go and look at my recent videos, there's one called Let's Buy Paula Tank. All the information's in there. And you can donate seriously. Uh, if you only have $10 that you can spare, send $10. Every little bit helps. Um, mm -hmm. Also, I've heard a couple of people mentioning um, maybe the VA might help with something like that, or there's other uh, yeah. charities or something out there. Yeah, that might we help didn't with, think like, they the would. Or... We didn't think they would because the people with the with the uh, the, the walk-in tub told us they won't. But I've had all kinds of people say to me online recently, people that are in the VA or can uh, been. Um, gotten certain things like this from the VA that we need to pursue it. And there's been a couple guys that have contacted Paul recently that have told him that we might be able to get the VA to help. So if that happens, um, that would be a tremendous blessing. And then, um, but we, what we would do is probably the money, whatever monies we did get, um, would probably just go into fixing um, the bathrooms, plural, because all three of our bathrooms are down right now. I know it's been really crazy difficult okay anyway. second would be um what was your website that you were talking about again the one dot net uh, gentle births plural with an s dot net and um that's that's my website if you want to um, 
learn about, I don't really talk about the Lord much on that at all, but I definitely talk about my, my midwifery practice and um, some of my recommendations. Like I said, not all because I have to look at you as an individual, but the general recommendations, it's basically stay away from toxins and and I'm a holistic midwife, so I talk about your spirit, your soul, and your body when I'm helping you. So it's your spirit is basically who you are. Your soul is your mind, will, and emotions, and your body, what manifests in your body often is what happens in your spirit and your soul. So it's really important to look at the whole person, not just the body, like we've been trained to do in our culture. Are you taking on like new clients ever or? Yeah, just... oh yeah, I'm, I yeah, I definitely am. I mean, there's been a rumor. I don't know who started it, but that I was dead. Even I was told. <laughs> I went to a friend of mine's funeral like a month or so ago, and and this woman comes running up to me, goes, "One of my clients from maybe twenty years ago." She goes, "Oh, I'm so relieved to see you," and I says, "What?" And she looked really like really relieved, and I went, "Why?" She goes, "I heard a rumor that you had died." <laughs> <laughs> and then and then another rumor that was going around is that she doesn't do births anymore she just teaches which is not true and I still do births and I like to do at least three a, a month ideally when I'm here and since I haven't been getting births I've been getting more engagements to teach and since I'm not going off the continent so much anymore um, uh, you know I'm, I'm willing but I was supposed to go to Turkey and to Sinai and uh, where else was I supposed to? Russia. In fact, I was supposed to be in Russia the day that the war broke out. Uh, I was supposed to leave the next day. And um, so obviously that changed. Um, and then Turkey, they had me coming. And then their um, their economy really took a hit. Excuse me. So they they canceled that one. And so I went to the East Coast. I went to North Carolina. I was supposed to be in Florida. But I went to North Carolina, um, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and um, Missouri. Um, that was pretty much spontaneous. When people found out I was there, they wanted me to come down and teach. But um, yeah, I teach, but I like doing births. I still want to do births. I still have seven more years to go because I felt like I was going to be a midwife till I was 77. And Is anyway. that something helping with births or something? Is that something you can do remotely? I've done it remotely. I, mean, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. Maybe but, not the actual birth. But. Well, I've done the actual birth remotely. I've done placentas, <laughs> done birth. I mean, well, like one time I was supposed to be in Sinai, and um, I, they didn't know when they were quite due, and, and so I helped them over the phone, I mean, over FaceTime. And then I helped, you know, people in different parts of the world. I just can't count all of them, but there's been quite a few. And then I've also done placentas over FaceTime. I mean... So, I mean, on some level, yeah, but I don't recommend it because it's not something that... But that like I, a, a coaching aspect or well, yeah. if somebody's dealing with anxiety or something like that. Yeah, I pray with a lot. People call me kind of all, yeah. Remotely. I've had people come from from uh, Kazakhstan, from Siberia, from where else? Oh, this couple just... They, they, they came here from Finland and was hoping to have their baby with me. And anyway, so... There's been people that have even come here from different parts of the world to have me help them. But but that's not something I necessarily recommend. That's pretty crazy. I didn't ask for it, but for some reason that's happened. And But I do, I help people however 